Hello everyone, it is time for this week's live stream. It's actually overtime and there was a false start. I hit delete and ignore and cancel and all that. So hopefully you get a fresh notification. Jack is barking at the window to let people know this is the official live stream. And I do hope that you'll enjoy today's topic. I invited Char uh, Carlos Chacon to join me today to talk about Hydros controllers and the one I use on Caitlin's Reef specifically. So we'll get into some of the gear and we will answer some questions that you have. Last week's live stream, I didn't answer any questions because there was none. But I'm assuming this week there'll be plenty and I want you to be a part of the conversation. I also wanna remind you that you need to get Reef Trace for your iPhone or your Android phone to keep track of your water parameters and to add notes when you add things, when you do water changes, when you change carbon, when you replace media, uh, just anything that has to do with your tank. It's like a permanent diary in your phone so you can double check things and see what you did last in case something comes up, you can verify if you've taken care of it or not. That will definitely help you a lot. Uh, it's on my phone, I use it. I'm always one version ahead of you. So I get to see some of the cool things behind the scenes before it becomes released officially. Uh, there's no other news, so we will put Carlos on the screen now. That's him. Hey. <laughs> That's it. That's him. <laughs> like, he really gave that a lot of thought. <laughs> All good right, thing, Carlos, good thing thank I wasn't, you. I wasn't like, I wasn't like shock. eating something in the middle of a, you know, eating a hot dog or something. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah! <laughs> of course, hot dogs on the live stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That or, you know, a shot of whiskey. <laughs> right. Well, you see, we could have done that. I could have said, do you have your Crown Royal? Because I've got mine. But uh, I didn't. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm that's good. So go ahead. Sorry. I, did, I didn't have a plan for alcohol today at this time. I mean, that's later in today. I'm going to be doing a barbecue fire pit. I'll drink then. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's yeah. it. So how are you? Thanks for having me around, man. I am so glad. You know, we've actually talked about having you on for probably a year. And yes. it was actually your idea. You said, Mark, we have to put it on the book so you'll never do it. <laughs> and you're not and wrong. <laughs> we've been talking about it. We see each other at shows and it's like, we should do it. Yeah, we should do it. We just talk about it. It's kind of like almost like, it's like, hey, man, it's like, you know, you it's like asking somebody you want to go on a date but it never actually goes in the you know it's like okay let's just put this down let me let me check your calendar here's my day you know i just felt so like the best way to do you know if you really want to talk about all the gear is to do it yes. in your official booth because all the gear is there and you can point to things and you can show it and you can demo it and you can't do that in what looks like your office area I know, I know, but but at the same time i do like this because then we get to answer your viewers questions yeah. You know, and, and, and let's be honest, sometimes when you're doing that presentation, you don't want to be the one raising your hand all the time and answering questions. I get that. It's intimidating. So that's why yeah. I like also doing this kind of shows, because then I get to answer questions. You know, right. um, uh, you may not get the answer you want, but but I, <laughs> but, I, but I give you an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Let me uh, switch this to the video I made of Caitlin's Reef. This is not the one I released on YouTube the other day. This is fresh video from today. I was working on the tank and I, uh, it, it was not even awake yet. I turned the lights on early. So zoanthids were still trying to open up and you know, there's algae in there that's irritating me. But I just thought I'd stick this stuff on the screen for a little bit while we're chatting. Carlos, I installed the Hydros on my tank last year, probably within a few months of the tank getting started. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, being the king of DIY, it seems like, I will just use whatever's available in my possession to avoid mm -hmm. a trip to Home Depot. And I had, some, I had some shelf that belonged to furniture that I'd never used. And I thought, you know, that's a nice white board. I can go ahead and I can just use that as a controller board holder and stand it up inside my stand. And I'm gonna show you guys that here in a minute. I just thought I'd let this video run a little bit longer before we switch. And that way I can mount everything up and keep it dry and keep it centered and keep it organized and tidy instead of having a rat's nest. Because initially I set up the tank like anyone else does, you cram everything inside the stand and you just hope water will never get in there. <laughs> and that's, yes. that's always a risk. Let me see if I can be tricky. We're playing this video right now. Mm -hmm. Can I stick you on here maybe? Camera overlay, that's me. I don't want to be me. Look, everyone sees my green screen. <laughs> there, that's Carlos. So I'll shrink you, you down. I'll put you over here. 
and then we can just watch your reaction to the tank and you know all the ugly faces you make. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, you know, we were talking about this before the uh, before the live, and I love this tank. Mm -hmm. I I'm looking at the live rock, and this is the live rock that we used to get as normal live rock, you know, 20 years ago. Um, right. We didn't get we didn't get the pristine bleached whatever, you know. And I don't know. I'm obviously I'm 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 probably just you know don't don't assume that it's bleach because it's probably it isn't but it's acid wash or whatever they do that they make it so it's so clean and yep. and and sterile and it's not something that i like i liked mm -hmm. i liked it when we got those live rock and then you were looking at the sponges and the algae and all the critters and everything the life that you got out of that rock coming from the ocean yeah. it was just amazing which i think is missing now so i really appreciate that and surprisingly enough I also really like the airstone. There's something about it in the back corner. <laughs> That's that coming just, up again. <laughs> it, it's I find it very soothing. Yeah. Let me see. I'll fast forward this a little bit so we can find it. There's my there it is. Yeah. You can see the airstone again. Yeah, I initially wanted oh, so I had a few reasons for the airstone. My biggest purpose of the airstone was to keep the tank from dying in the event of a power outage. Because mm -hmm. if the power goes out, that entire tank just goes dormant. Nothing. No movement whatsoever. And the Nero 5 pump doesn't have a battery backup system of any kind like the Vortec does. And I just thought, I need something that will put air in the tank. But who wants an airstone just sitting there doing nothing forever with algae growing on it? I want it to be operational. Yes. And then I thought, well, if I put the airstone in that corner, it can kind of mask the heater and hide some of the cords and hide some of the tubes going down the back. And mm -hmm. at this angle, of course, it's not doing a great job. But from the front, it's actually pretty good. And yeah. it's adding air all the time. And then if the power goes out, it just continues to run. Yes, it does. I mean, and, and we had a conversation about that and how do we do it with the hydros? Mm -hmm. um, and, it would, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I, yeah. think it's, I think it looks amazing. That tank looks so natural. I mean, it is- It's very natural. I, That's and, very and polite I, of you. <laughs> no, no, and, I, you know, and I'm saying this, I'm saying this as, as a compliment, the, the natural mm -hmm. look, I really like it is, it's something that I would say, it's like, you know, I want this, I want this at home. I want mm -hmm. that at home. I want, I want a tank that looks clean, but yet at the same time, you can just let it, let it go and, yeah. and see how, and see how it evolves. Yeah. Now, uh, right now you can see there's like nuisance algae on the red plant. And even my brand mm -hmm. new Gorgonian has been in the tank a week. It's suddenly covered with this green algae. And I was like, oh mm -hmm. no. And I'm not sure, but I read that this coral can slough off like a, like a shed. So maybe it'll mm -hmm. shed off the algae. I also mm -hmm. read somewhere you could put it in a dip of RO water for one minute as long as the temperature is the same as your tank. So I okay. did that yesterday before I glued it down to the rock. But I, I'm thinking I might have to flux RX and reduce my cool algaes in this tank to kind of clean it up, to get it back to a starting point, and maybe plant some fresh macro algae to have a nice look again. Yeah, some um, some macroalgae there just to outcompete the the other the non yeah. the, the not good algae, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, some prolifera would look good there. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I hope it's like prolifera, like because it's just it's easy. It looks good and it's easy to peel off. You can just pull, 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 pull it off and all that. Some of the other algae is like, eesh, you know. Yeah, it's all a little right, hard to me, get. Uh, see what else we got here in this video. We got we've got about forty seconds left, and then we'll go ahead and transition mm -hmm. off. But uh, so, yeah, this is what the tank looks like today. I will tell you guys this. If you have the Shark Pro and you don't have the cool little basket inside there to hold your carbon, you need the basket. I learned the hard way yesterday because he said, don't worry about it. I said, hey, I don't have that little white basket that you put the carbon in. And he says, you don't need that. Just put the carbon in the middle. And I thought, yeah, there's a sponge on each side. I guess that makes sense. So I put the carbon in. I rinsed it really well. And then I put it in the tank and I turned on the pump. And I think it just sucked the carbon up into the pump and blew the carbon into the sand bed. And I was Oof. like, ah, oh. so I pulled and I have nothing. I don't do carbon in a, in a filter. I haven't done that in 20 plus years. Okay. So I went to my bathroom and got some cotton balls and put them on the top of the carbon. <laughs> Just <laughs> so you can see the carbon on the sand, some of the grains that came out. I do. I do. I, I do like, see oh, that. Oh God, what a mess. So anyway, let me come back to this here. Um, so anyway, the cotton balls are a temporary solution. I know we're supposed to use batting of some kind. I really want the little box. And yes, if I owned a 3D printer, I could probably print the perfect cage with a little top I could take off and I could put it inside. But they have one that fits. I don't know why I didn't get it. Maybe I should just go to my shelf since I sell the product and just steal one from the customer's container and put it in my own tank. 
but I well, didn't it's, get. It's, it, it's sold separately. It would when you go to Macna or Aquashella, they show you. You open the box and there's a white, uh, like okay. pill box in the middle. Mine right. didn't have a pill box. It had sponge, sponge, sponge. Uh, and I yeah. guess maybe if you go the next size up, you have sponge on sponge, and the next one's probably sponge, sponge, pill box. Uh, my guess, but because I use the smallest, because her tank is so small, I ended mm -hmm. up with this uh, situation last night, and I was—I mean, the water's clear. <laughs> it did that part, but uh, <laughs> what a what I was just annoyed. It's like you know, those are those little yeah. things you learn the hard way. You're like, ah, mm -hmm. I did not. Yep. Th I thought, well, it's not filled to the top; it's down. So I assumed as just... the water came through, it wouldn't come out, but it's a little buoyant. Yep. And when that pump turned on, it just went, Burr. and I'm mm -hmm. with a fish, you know, like, what do we do? Grab a fishnet and you start catching all you can out of the yep. water pump. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So let's look at the controller board. So here oh, is my go. current controller board. I shared pictures of this in the Hydros group the other day. And uh, I've got some extra pictures we can throw on the screen here uh, of individual components. But from the top, um, I will just describe, wait, we need Carlos back. Bring Carlos back. Let me see if I can add you again. It'll add me in my green screen, I guess, I'm again. Oh, I have an idea. No, I don't have an idea. Let's do it like before. We'll do it like before and be messy. It, it's me again. Yep. It always starts with me. I guess I'm in charge. Such a terrible, terrible. If you do this, put you right here. So uh, we've got the X3, the Control X3 at the top, mm -hmm. which uh, you guys sell an X2, X3, X4, XP8, working on the X10. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between the two and the three? I have the three. <clears throat> oh. All right, so the two and the three are um, um, the drive ports. The X2 has two drive ports, so you can use it for 12 volt devices, you know, lights, little pumps, and it has two sensors. It does not have a pH input in there. The X3 does have that pH input. It okay. only has two sensors in there. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I tell this at the Magna show and I may sound redundant to some of the people that I would, you know, some of the people are in here, but it's kind of like you, you start with anything, you start with anything. And then as you grow, you add more modules to the controller board uh you don't have to you don't have to go and buy you know the gold package or the platinum package or whatever they call it nowadays it, it, it mm -hmm. just keep it keep it simple kiss you know if i only need if i have a small tank like yourself do i do you need to buy an x4 with two ph probes four sensors two drive ports zero to ten volt in no you don't need to do that so why should you spend 400 and something dollars for that at that point let's just go with something smaller and right. if you like it afterwards then we'll add more stuff to it mm -hmm. to grow with it yeah well i plugged this one in and just got it operational i never looked at it again so mm -hmm. because of that i don't have the knowledge you have i'm looking at it i know mm -hmm. the command bus is sort of like a way to daisy chain different components so you have Correct. a terminal thing that is like where you stop the chain, I guess. And then you, the next, like from the left, I have my terminator, right? Isn't that what you call the terminator? Yes, yes. <laughs> it is. It is actually, it's not that we call it a terminator. If you're dealing with, uh, with if you're dealing with CAN bus, that is actually something that you have to put at the end of the chains right. in order for the CAN bus to work correctly. That terminator is on, you know, airplanes, it's on cars, okay. and it's what makes it reliable. Uh, the other, so those are the blue ports on the left. If you see right. that, right, and then so the next yeah. one then connected straight into the XP8, which is down below, which you guys will see in a second. Correct, and that would that does that blue port allows us to daisy chain from one brain to the other one, so the brains right. can all talk to each other. That's that's the wired connection where the brains are going back and forth and sharing information. The XP8 is telling the X3, okay, my, you know, you know. Port uh, a outlet one two three are on. They're they're drawing this much power. This is the temperature, yeah. and then obviously the X three is t the X three is telling the XP eight. Okay, the temperature is seventy eight degrees, and mm -hmm. the pH is so forth. So they keep communicating back and forth. Okay, you. I thought you said before there's a couple of drive ports on here, but I don't think there are. No, on X3. no, no. The X two has the drive ports. The X three does it. not. Okay, that, yeah. I was trying to make sure because I was like, I don't remember this at all. And I don't think I have anything plugged into a drive port. So no, I've got no, two sense ports on this one. 
Yes, you do. And you can tell them by the difference by the color. So right. everything is color everything is color coded. The if we uh go in the a command, little tighter here, you can see it a Yeah. Better. The command bus port is blue, the sensors yep. are are orange, the drive ports are uh um, I'm sorry, the sense ports are green, the ones that you see there. And yep. then there's the, the probes are blue, like a, like a light blue. And uh -huh. then the drive ports, the drive ports are orange. So it, you okay. can't, and, and every, and you've seen this before, because actually when you were plugging it in, every single port type has a different pinout too. Yeah. So you can't, you, can't you cannot, you cannot mix them up. You cannot take a drive, uh, a drive port uh, connector and put it on a sense port. It doesn't work. So we've we've made it so that not only color coordinated but also pinouts, so that you don't have to worry about that. I'll throw this one on here. And how do you like the connectors though? The screw on, it screws I, on. You can't. It you reminds can't me of BNC. I like those. You know, it's you can feel like it's secure. Yes. So here's my XP8, which again you can see the blue uh, area that, which you call the command bus. That's where mm -hmm. the daisy chain cable goes, and there's another terminator right. because I only have right. two things talking, and nothing's going to the left, nothing's going to the right. It just yeah, these so, are self-contained to talk to each other only. Correct, and you don't need a term. You know, you only need terminators at the end of the line. So if oh. you were to put another device in here, then mm -hmm. you would, you know, based on where you put it. If you put it between the XP8 and the X3, then you don't put the terminator. But if you put it after the XP8, then what you would do is you would move the Terminator to the other device and then add a cable from the XP8 to the other device. Right. You're all you're doing is you're creating a chain and then yeah. you make sure that those Terminators get moved to the ends, to both ends. Yeah, to the, the posts. Chain. So yes, everything stays post. contained. So yes, exactly. if you're using a cable for everything to talk to itself, how does Wi-Fi come into the equation other than talking to your app? Okay, so Wi-Fi also allows the devices to go to the server and pull the latest configuration. So the way it works is actually is the app, it sends the, when you make changes on the app, the changes are sent to the cloud. And then the cloud sends them down to your devices, each device. Uh, so that's how it works. Wi yeah, the, we, we send it directly to the cloud because that also allows us to create a backup mm -hmm. of your previous configuration. Okay. So something that you can restore. I know that other controllers don't allow you to do that. Once you make a change, right. you've made the change, you can't revert. With the with the hydros, you can you can actually undo changes and restore from a previous backup. Think of it as a as Windows, what is a Windows computer? Microsoft does that where if an update goes bad, you can actually boot up your computer and then restore your computer to a previous day, like the day before or something before the update so that, right. you know, whatever, whatever the update broke, you can fix without having to call Microsoft. So yeah. we do the same thing. So that's how you do it. And then the um, cloud also allows you to connect to other cloud devices, such mm -hmm. as, you know, the Alcatronic or the Focustronic or the KH Care, anything out there that we have that we could, that we pulled the information from the cloud and bring it mm -hmm. into the hydros. Yeah. Nice. Now, one one thing I want to make clear though is that we the only thing you need the cloud to is to make changes, mm -hmm. and for the human being, the human factor to see what's going on. Once the once you upload the changes, the the changes are uploaded to the cloud and they're pushed to every single device on the mm -hmm. hydro system. So the, the configuration is stored on the device itself. So the configuration is stored on your X3, and there's also a copy of that configuration stored on your XP8. So if you were loose to, you were to lose Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. While they can't connect to the cloud and you won't be able to see them, the devices still are going to be able to run themselves. They'll continue to talk to each other and do everything. So you can rest assured that if you lost Wi-Fi, the, dev yeah. the devices don't care. They're going to keep going. If you lost power, that's a different story. You yeah. know, but that's a bigger problem. But okay, no, what I, if I, think... I lost power, so everything's dead, and I plug in my hydros into a generator, mm -hmm. but I don't plug in the router, so I still have no Wi-Fi. Would where would the hydros, for example, know what day and time it is? How would it's it got know? a real it's got a real time clock inside with a small battery. Oh, nice. So that's what we, yeah, it's got a real time clock inside with a small battery. We've done that already. So it doesn't have to go to the cloud in order to pull the dates and everything. Right. So that's what you do. And also once, so when you come back, the devices are going to come back up. They're going to try to connect to the cloud, but they won't yeah. be able to connect to the cloud. But 
in the meantime, while they're trying to connect to the cloud, they're still having another conversation in the back. Tech, yeah. We're talking about, you're talking about computers here. They can have, yeah. you know, millions of conversations at the same time and still work. Right. So that's what you do. Eventually they'll time out and then yes. they'll say, okay, I'm not doing that. Or they'll go into, they won't time out completely. They'll go into, instead of trying every few minutes, then they'll start trying every 20 minutes and then they'll start yeah. trying every 30 minutes and then every one hour. And that's where and, it is. And I think that's the notifications I get during the middle of the night sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If your Wi-Fi goes down, then the cloud is not able to connect to the thing. A lot of people say, well, well, my internet went down. How is, shouldn't the, shouldn't the cloud know that, that my internet went down? And technically it doesn't. All the cloud knows is that, hey, I'm sending out a, a call out and I'm not getting an answer. It yeah. could be a power, it would, it could be a power loss. It could be an internet outage. It could be anything. I just, so what, why is it happening? I don't know. I just mm -hmm. know that it happened and that's what it's telling you. So mm -hmm. that's where the human, you know, remember these are computers. The human factor is still important. They'll, yeah. they're telling you there's a warning, but as a human being, now you have to go in there and look at why the warning is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, devil's advocate. What mm -hmm. happens if your cloud based system goes down and we can't you know, talk to it anymore? What's, it's, uh, it's, what, where it, are we at at that point? <laughs> it's no, a I good mean, question. What do we do? What, what do, we, we do we do? No, we use, we use AWS. Okay. So if the cloud, if AWS goes down, trust me, your tank is going to be the least of your worries, you know, cause oh, Netflix, does it, what does that stand for? I don't know it. Amazon web services. Okay. All right. Amazon. All right. Yeah. So it's yeah, so pretty big company. Yeah. <laughs> so our cloud, our cloud system is the same one that a lot that Netflix uses is the same thing that, oh. that, that Max uses is a, a system that some banks use. It's okay. all used by Amazon AWS. So we do that. Gotcha. You can, if you want to download a copy of your configuration to your computer, yeah. mm -hmm. but you know, it's like, it, it would have to be something incredibly catastrophic in yeah. order for AWS to go down for a long period of time. And okay. even if the cloud goes down yeah. again, the configuration is on your system, on right. your systems. So they'll continue to chat. They'll just, yeah. you know, they'll just, They'll just continue to chat. They'll see the error. I can't connect, but it doesn't matter. Now yeah. you won't be able to go in there and make any permanent changes, right. but you could connect via Bluetooth and overwrite certain things. Okay. You mentioned something earlier about you could download your configuration to your computer mm -hmm. if you wanted. Um, mm -hmm. I, I noticed kind of coincidentally, there was a guy that was having problems in the hydros group. He, you know, he came in there and asked for help. And I think he tried several things. And I believe someone in that chat said, stop changing anything because you will end up overriding every backup you have because you have so something you, like 14 backups total and, or, or something, you, you know, where you could go back a series. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So in the app, we show you 20, 20 versions of your 20 okay. changes. Okay. Yeah. But we, on the back end, we also have access to a lot more changes than that. Okay. It's just what, what, just what we show you on the app, right. but you know, without getting into details or something like, and, and things like that, you know, yeah. there was a lot of, there were a lot of, you know, there were some things that were done that made things a lot more difficult than mm -hmm. they, sh they should have been. Sure. You know, and I, you know, we released, I released a video, we released a video a few, uh, you know, about a year ago, and it was just a video of trouble, it's basic troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. And what's the, no what's the number one thing on the video? Don't reset the devices. Right. The yeah. moment you reset the devices, you're wiping them clean. Um, um, that doesn't that doesn't help you. That doesn't because yeah, then you when you come back, again. you're starting from scratch. But even if it, you start from scratch, then when you come back and you restore the f restore from your last thing, you're restoring back to configuration. So all you've done is going through a circle, but ended up at the same spot where you started. Yeah. You know. So, you know a lot of the times it's, it's the last thing you want to do is reset the devices because that just makes things a lot harder that, that, that creates more work for you, you know, yeah. go on social media, go on social media and ask questions. Most of the guys in there, I, I think the group, the hydros group has gotten big enough that, and, and, and it's very active, actually mm -hmm. it is very active. So people try to guide you and a lot of them are there. And I know yeah. that, um, there was a, an, and I give, I give props to Thomas because he was an end user. And Thomas sent a message to this guy and said, Hey, give me your phone number. I'll call you and I'll help you. Mm -hmm. This was just an end user yeah, yeah, yeah. helping out another end user. It wasn't awesome yeah. tech support or anything like that. And that, you know, those are the things that, that, 
that make this make what we do worth it when right. you see people helping each other yeah. that way you know instead of trolling or instead of telling you yeah. you're you're stupid or something it, no yeah. it's like you know that's not constructive that's not going to help anybody that's right. not going to help the the person having the problem and it's definitely look make you look like a douchebag you know yeah. for for saying that how about we just help each other and if you don't know the answer then you know and if you really want to post something is man i don't know the answer i hope you yeah. find it contact right. support and, mm -hmm. and and i i wish you the best yeah you know it's i think you know and i'm i'm getting into one of those soapbox but it's like COVID has caused people to 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 forget that they're human beings on the other side oh yeah hey you talk about resetting in my brain i would think that means unplug it and plug it in but do you mean <laughs> where you put the magnet on there to erase it what do yeah. you mean yeah, so so at Hydros, we 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 thought about a lot of things, and uh, you know, it's one of this one of the advantage of not being of being a late coming comer into the system, mm -hmm. into the controllers world, yeah. but the advantage of that is also that you get to see what everybody else has done, right? And then think of it, how can we make it better? So there in the Hydros, there actually has a um, there's a little spot on the Hydros that you can actually put a magnet in there. Mm -hmm. And when you put a magnet in there, it causes a reset routine. And the reset routine, you can reset it. And uh, I'll go through the colors. If you go to green, it undoes the last change. Okay. So if you if you make a change, and all of a sudden your app is not connecting, you mm -hmm. can actually go to the controller, put the magnet, wait until it starts spinning green, and then take the magnet off. And that's ah. like that's like hitting undo on your undo. word process undo exactly. Oh, I like that. That's what I it, didn't know that. Okay. Yes. It's <laughs> okay. all. It, yeah. If you if you then green goes in there and, and then green times out and it moves on to yellow and then yellow starts spinning. Yellow means let's wipe out the Wi-Fi credentials. I enter the okay. Wi-Fi credentials incorrectly. Yeah. You know it's it's fine. So then it wipes out the Wi-Fi credentials and then you can go and enter new ones. Okay. Then red means the the it goes to the previous firmware. Let's say something happened oh. on the firmware and the okay. firmware that it crashed. How many times have you had cameras that you're updating the firmware, something happens in the middle of the update and you have what they call a bricked camera and you can't do yeah. anything with it. You just right. throw it away. Yeah. Okay, so we have that as well. And then there's a purple color rounding off and that's reset everything. And that means, reset means erase, right? Like er set it to, yeah, it means to day erase, one. Erase it back to the, erase the configuration, make it to zero factory. everything back yeah, to so factory. So it won't know your name, it won't know anything. No, nope, it won't know anything. It's like, it's like it was brand new. And it knows so that, nothing, but your app knows everything, but yes, you can't make it, the app talk to it because it has no idea who you are. No, right? you have to, so then at that point, because you've, you've created a new device, what you do is you go to the app and you have to register it because okay. it's a new device. Yeah, but yeah. this, the backups and everything on the cloud are set are linked by the serial number. So as mm -hmm. soon as you bring that device up, it'll it'll then you have the option of going to your backups, upload, hit, and all the configuration from the previous one, it'll just go right into the device, grab it ah. on, the cloud will grab it back on and bring it into you. Well, that's nice. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So those are <laughs> the little great. things that we've, those are the little things that we've thought about. Okay. In addition to that, it's like, you know, how many times, you know, how many times computers, phones, you install a firmware and something happened and it's it, yeah. it just and then the computer the computers get stuck rebooting and it just reboots and right. reboots and nothing happens and all that stuff on top of the installation this the resets we also have when you install a firmware yeah the device the firmware does not become permanent until mm -hmm. 30 seconds after the firm is installed and you reboot it okay so what happens if you re if you install the firmware you reboot and something went wrong and it crashed then the unit will reboot itself. Okay. As soon as it reboots itself, it goes back to the previous firmware. Okay. So you're not breaking it. Now, yeah. if if you if everything was installed correctly and you reboot itself, the device is going to be happy and everything. And after 30 seconds, it's going to say, "Okay, this is this firmware that you just installed. It's perfectly fine. Let me make it permanent." Yeah. So after 30 seconds, then you can reboot as many times and it'll keep the same firmware. But if you install a firmware and you reboot the device or it reboots itself within 30 seconds, it reverts back to the previous firmware, saving okay. you the trouble of getting a brick device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, you had a trick for updating firmware 
So I'm, there's going to be people watching this that love Hydros. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people that are watching this that just got the Hydros. They got people that are watching this that are going to get the Hydros. So when you start seeing notifications in your app saying new firmware available, and I think there's an option like, yeah, okay, I'll do it later. Or there's like, mm -hmm. yes, do it right now. I remember when I had to do it about two months ago, I saw a few firmwares, I think, or at least each of my devices wanted. So my XP8 wanted it and my X3 mm -hmm. wanted it. And my brain was thinking the X3 is the brain, the XP8 is the power. So I thought, let me do the brain first, but technically each component has its own brain. So I was kind of wrong already, but I tried to do the first one and it took forever. And it was like thinking, thinking, I was like, why is this taking so long? I mean, I know what firmware is, it's this big. And I just think it should just download and be in. And it was taking forever. And I finally got that one to do it. But then I think there was an option next to the screen. Maybe it said reboot. I don't remember. But mm -hmm. then underneath was my XPA. And I thought, okay, I'll do that one next. And then when everything's had their firmwares, I'll tell it, go to the next stage. And whatever I was doing, it was wrong. And I spent like three hours fighting this thing. I mean, because I, I just, because I'm, I'm in it. No, no, it's me doing something completely wrong. I don't understand. But you said, oh, if you had only done this, like if you'd, held the button down for three seconds or something, it would have updated everything. And so whatever that is, can you explain that? So, you know, it's think of it, you know, controllers, let's be honest, controllers at the end of the day, they're computers. They are computers, mm -hmm. whether, you know, they don't have a keyboard, they don't have a monitor, mm -hmm. but they're still right. computers. So mm -hmm. what does, what does windows, what do Mac, what does um, uh, your iPhone tells you before you do a firmware update, they usually tell you, you know what, reboot your computer first. Yeah. and then go ahead and install because it just yeah. a fresh reboot makes it a lot easier to install so right. if you have a, if we if you have a new firmware you know the, the this one of the greatest things to do is just go through the controllers go to the uh options um go to the device properties and just reboot the collective okay it'll what it'll do is it'll send a signal to every single device just to reboot itself okay and it reboots itself it comes back within like five ten seconds it's fine okay. and then once you do that then go into the firmware and yes that's the little trick if you went on the button on the right that says download firmware 289 and right. it's, you have five devices they all say that yes you could go you could you could go and press 589 and all that but a little easter egg that we have there's a lot of easter eggs around the, the app yeah that's what they that need if, to know <laughs> yeah if they if you press and hold that button for like about three seconds okay. then all the devices will start to download at the same time that's perfect. See, I wish yes. I'd known that. I wish that came up on the screen as an option. Would you like me to hit all these while you're at it? I keep, that's why I was telling, I've told everyone this. I mean, this is not a secret. I keep saying, I cannot wait to see where this app is in two years. I just know <laughs> the app is gonna be fantastic in two years because it's yep. still young. It's still in its inception. And you're, you're trying to make sure it's structural. Then you yes. can make it fancy. But oh exactly. my God, that whole thing. So, okay, let's say I have five devices. I see five update firmwares. My brain says, hit the first one, leave it alone, let it download. Mm -hmm. And the reason mm -hmm. is, is because if you edit a video on your phone, in iMovie, for example, on the iPad, on the mm -hmm. iPhone, and then you've got your video, and then you say, save video, and then the screen comes up and it says, saving to your camera roll or whatever it does, you know, or saving to photos. Mm -hmm. If you do anything to exit the screen, it stops saving the video. And it'll right. even warn you, you left the screen, ha. So, so when I'm doing the firmware, we're like, okay, touch firmware, don't touch the phone, leave it alone. Very yeah, grandpa no. of me. But I think I'm hearing from you, I could have gone tap, 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 and they'd all start loading all at the same time? Or do I need to do yeah. one and wait and then go to the second one and wait? No, no, no. What you do is um, the, you know, the, the days of, of updating something and not leaving the screen, they're, they're, they're gone. That's, that's a very... 2010 and previous See? kind of a th kind of thinking. <laughs> Didn't know yeah, that. it is <laughs> exactly. It, you know, um, um, so what you do is you can actually. That's why we broke down the videos. The, the I'm sorry, we broke down the installation into two parts. Mm -hmm. There's the part where you download the firmware, mm -hmm. so you can download all the firmwares, and then there's a second step. Then you install the firmware. Okay. You have to download the firmware. Most of the stuff, remember, it's kind of like, down, you know, when you download an update on your computer, most likely it's going to ask you to download the update and then you have to double click yeah. or, or you, you have to do something to say, yes, right. update. You yeah. still have to do that. So it's a two part process. The reason we do that is because we don't want people, it, it, this, is the, this is the cardinal rule, never update a firmware when you're not at home. Yeah. 
don't do that. Yeah. Don't you're 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 poking the lion and you're gonna get bitten. Yeah. Because you know, let's be honest. I you know we 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 at at Hydros, you know. I can't promise you. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that 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 controller reboots correctly. Yeah. But I can't. I I can never be 100. percent I'm going to be honest about that. So don't go and poke the lion and expect right. the thing to 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 reboot because it's Murphy's law. Murphy's it law is. applies. There's a reason why we call it Murphy's law. Right. So what we do is you're at the office. Okay. You know, it's, I'll, I'll just go ahead and download the updates. So then when I get home. They'll be ready, and then I can just go ahead and install them. That's yeah. what we do. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, that must be what was on my screen. It probably said download firmware, and then there was install. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, maybe I need to grab them all first or something. But why is the download so slow? If it's coming from Amazon, shouldn't it be coming in really hard and fast? Or what's because, the slow port? Because we check the file multiple times as it's oh, coming in. Oh, it's a checksum command? Yes, it's a very, we check every single byte to come in and, and it's yeah. done correctly because we want to make sure that that firmware is is right. Yeah. You, you update the firmware fast, then yeah. you're going to get, then the likelihood of having a bad firmware is going to be higher. Okay. So right. it's a, it's a trade-off. And the fact that you can still, you can download the firmware, go back in the screen, and then you continue, you can upload changes, you can do anything yeah. you want. It, it doesn't matter. It's just, all it's doing is downloading something. In the, right. in the on the back on the back while okay. it's still competing and all that stuff because when you've got someone like me that has giga gigabit downloads mm -hmm. and i can pull down you know i can upload 20 gigs to youtube in three minutes you know it's insane yes. right so yes. when you say firmware and it's like taking 90 seconds or longer for this tiny file i get really confused by why it's taking so long or what is it doing but i get the handshake part i just didn't understand it, and i kept thinking something's not right I'm too close to the device. No. I'm too far away. My no. phone's busy playing games in the background. <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> happening. It's like, what? Yeah. I just want this to work so I can move on with my life. And that yeah. one day, it was, a, it was a real struggle. I might have to go beat my dog. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the mailman is in there, isn't there right now. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, it's, it's, we double check and triple check the firmware before we, before when it's downloading and then yeah. um, so that we can downloaded um yeah it's something that we're we work on constantly working and this is again when you have software it's 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 an ever working progress yeah you're Let always changing it that way. yeah you're always changing you're always trying to yeah. optimize things right technology technology changes all the time i right. mean so so software things that you know the operating system they change all the time and add new features yeah. so it's never it's it's a never-ending story and even yeah. if you had the perfect app when the new iPhone drops in September with its new security lab labels or levels, mm -hmm. your app may not even play nice with it, and you have to go in and change something. And when you change something, it might break something else. So yeah. it's it's quite the ordeal to make things work with every device on the market, you know, with every smartphone yes. on the market. Yes, it is. It is. I mean, that's one of the things about, you know, Apple and Android, at least with Apple, they're a little more strict about the devices. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit easier on, on Android. Every company has a different Android and then yeah. you have to keep up with all of them. It's a little, sometimes it can be a little challenging, you know, but that's the name of the game. We, when we got into the controller business, we knew what we were going to do and, and we knew this were going to be the obstacles. So yeah. we just kind of tasked along, you know, but now we mentioned smartphones, but actually, Hey Jack, um, we, I've seen in the group that people are also pulling up in their browser on their desktop. And you have mm -hmm. one power member. I mean, I don't know. I think he owns everything Hydro sells and the screen just goes for miles. It, it's, oh, just, that's, it's like 10,000 components. It's crazy. That is, <laughs> that is, that's Jeff. That's yeah. Jeff. Um, uh, yeah, Jeff. And he, you know, does just to make it up 100% clear, he does not work for CoralView. He's okay. just a power, <laughs> he's just a power user. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, we, we wanted to do it that people can use an app, but also mm -hmm. you can actually go to hydros, CoralViewHydros.com forward slash app. And then you can open the same app on your browser. So That's you don't nice. have to have the downloaded app. It makes it a lot easier. So if you, you want know, it on a it. tablet next to your tank, you could do the browser attack. You know, yeah, let's your, say you have it on. Yeah, you have it on a Fire tablet where you can't down. You you can't. Let me put it that way. <laughs> download yeah. it. You can always open the browser. Go to yeah. CoralViewHydros.com forward slash app and use that as and still as control your, your 
Oh, absolutely. The tank and and not watch it and all that kind of stuff. Okay, exactly. Good. All exactly. right, let's talk about this picture. We we were on it and I walked away from it. So here is yes. Oops, here is my APC UPS. Uh, it says it's a backup 550. I have no idea how long it'll last, but that mm -hmm. air pump uses three watts. So yes. I feel like it'll run a long time. But when I did a water change, I take the cover off the tank. And when the cover's off the tank, before I start sucking water out, the airstone is spattering the walls, the light, mm. the art. Everything's going to be covered in salt spatter until I deal with it. So I had right. to keep unplugging my air pump when yes. I do a water change. I was yeah. using the Hydros. I should have had a screenshot of my, my app, but I'm sorry, I didn't do it. Um, it's okay. In the app, I have a water change button, and I've got it set up to turn off multiple items for 15 minutes. It turns mm -hmm. off the... Um, the uh, Shark Pro, it turns off the heater because I don't want the mm -hmm. heater to explode. And it turns off the Nero 5 because I drained yes. down enough water, all three of those would be completely exposed to air and sucking and cracking and making horrible sounds. And yes. then the air pump, I had to reach down, I had to unplug it and I had to leave the door open so I would not forget to plug it back in. Mm -hmm. Because if I unplug it, do my water change, refill the tank, everything goes back to normal, but I didn't plug it in. And then that night we have a power outage for seven hours. I wake up, I have a dead Japanese pygmy angelfish on the bottom of the tank. Right. So my airstone is the lifeline of my reef, in my opinion, this tank. And so I wanted a way to turn off the power to the air pump mm -hmm. only with the app for a specified duration. And you said, Mark, we have just the thing. <laughs> yes. And that's that little thing right there. And I'm telling you, when I tried to take this picture, I was looking at my my phone as I'm taking the shot. And I say, why is Hydro's backwards? Because if you look really, really <laughs> close, the word is spelled backwards. <laughs> and then I realized it's upside down because that's how I had to plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is my image mirrored on my phone? Boy, I just sound like such yeah. a doofus. But it was just so confusing because you know the fonts are capitals. And so it didn't look upside down. Mm -hmm. It looked backwards to me. But I tested this out. I was very excited. You said, get this. I grabbed it at Aquashella. Mm -hmm. And I also got them from my shop. So they're available from Milo's Reef. And mm -hmm. um, I, it wasn't hard to connect. I think I went to add new device or add Wi-Fi. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. It found it. It did something. I don't know if I had to do anything. I can't remember if I had to enter any kind of credentials or not. Nope. And then it, I guess it had to, maybe this color, purple, I guess. It was on the front. Mm -hmm. And it was like happy and part of the new collective. And now mm -hmm. when I hit the water change button, that outlet turns off for 15 minutes with everything else. Correct. And then it starts automatically. And I thought, okay, but now what happens if we kill power to the whole tank? Will that thing interfere? Will it be in like the normally closed or the normally open or whatever, like a solenoid? You know, so I, yep. I pulled the plug from the wall and that thing did not interfere. The UPS kept the airstone going. Tank was yes. pitch dark, dead silent, airstone running. I was super excited that this worked. Not only that, and I, you know, and, and one of the things that I can even push it a little bit further for you, uh, Mark, mm -hmm. is uh, the outlet actually can power monitor. Yes, I read that when I was adding to the site <laughs> because yes. I was copying the content from CoralView to put you mm -hmm. know, the item description, and it said it does power monitoring that the Wi-Fi strip does not. Yes, it's it's it, you know this one this little outlet has a, a better. Um, it has a, a little larger brain in it yeah. and, and it has the hardware in there to do power monitoring while the Wi-Fi strip doesn't. I mean, the yeah. Wi-Fi strip is, is 40 bucks. This is 25, I think. Yes, um, that sounds right. So, 24. Yeah, 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 yeah. 24 or something like that. But yep. for you, it's, for you, it's great because also um, what you can do on the app is you can mm -hmm. put the, the power range to monitor yes. power range in there so that if your tank is running correctly, but all of a sudden the air stone goes bad yeah. and it's not drawing any power, then it'll let yeah. you know. Because at yeah. the end of the day, you want to make sure that that is working optimally in case you lose power. I'll double check and make sure I have that set up correctly. But I mm -hmm. do have that set up on my heater. Yes. And a week ago, we had issues. No, two weeks ago, I had, we had issues here. I can't remember what all was going on, but it was just, there was problems. First, I had AC issues that went on for days and they fixed that. Then, I don't know, somehow the tank was getting too cold. The heater came on, but the tile was red, and it said I was using one watt because I'd mm. set up the power monitoring correctly. 
My heater is a 100 watt heater. I think I set it to go down as low as, I don't know, maybe I picked 90 or something or 75 and then as high as 110. So if it went uh -huh. higher than 100, I should know. If it was uh, too low, it would um, give me a notification. And that's exactly what happened. It was telling me it's using one watt. And mm -hmm. I thought, ugh. So of course, I don't check the heater. There's nothing wrong with the heater. So I of created course. a new outlet on the XP8 and called it Heater 2 and copied or and entered in all the data again. Now I'm sure you're gonna say, oh, we could have done copy one to copy eight and it would have just done it for you automatically. But anyway, I just manually said, it's a heater, I need this, I do that. And now I had two tiles that said one watt and zero watt. And I was like, ah, so this is not working. <laughs> and I, you know, I moved the plug to the other outlet, it didn't work. And I thought this stupid heater broke. But this is a mm -hmm. cold water tank at 75 degrees, you know, chilled. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't too, too worried about it not warming up, but um, I think it was maybe the next morning it occurred to me to just reach in the tank and turn the knob on the top and see what would happen. And the darn yeah. heater came on. I was yeah. like, oh, okay, maybe when I was putting the lid back on, I somehow bumped the knob and it just got a little bit out of the target area of adding heat to the tank. Well, a few days later, the red tile's on again. So Hydrus is letting me know I have an issue with this heater, which was really nice to have. So I really, there's several times I've really liked what the Hydrus did for me. So I, wa I want to be upfront with that. You know, it's not just, mm -hmm. this is not a sales pitch conversation. <laughs> no. But it's definitely a, a nice device that I've been running for myself. I've probably been using it for 10 months. I don't know. It, it feels like mm -hmm. it's not a year because the tanks were running a year. And it took me a couple of months to get mine. But yeah. I do like what it did. And I'll tell you, there is something wrong with the heater because... I tried the adjusting knob, that didn't help. But then I discovered when I lifted the heater up like an inch higher in the water column, it worked. And then I said, okay. And I set it down carefully and it went out. And I lifted uh. up and the light came on. And I was like, okay. So I like bent the cable, you know, like, okay, there's a bad spot, you know, which means the heater's bad, right? Yeah. And yeah. I just need to get a new heater. And matter of fact, I don't need a hundred watt heater. I need a 75 watt. And yeah. I'm just going to replace it with a new one. Maybe Hydro will start selling heaters and I can put that in. I don't know. But uh... <laughs> that's something you want to get into. <laughs> You're not going to make heaters? <laughs> you know, the thing about and and going, going back to your uh, creating that second tile or that mm -hmm. second. About, okay, so that to and I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attribute that to your um, previous controller. Yeah, the Apex. Yeah. Okay, so on the other controller, what you do is the configuration is attached to the actual outlet on the strip. Uh huh. So, so you can't once you put that configuration to that outlet, you yeah. can't change the outlet. It's okay. kind of like the outlet, the outlet, the outlet numbers at the top, and here's your configuration. Right. And you can't you can't change you can't change your email address. You can't yeah. change the outlet. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. what, if you want to go to the next outlet, you have to you have to open the next outlet copy the configuration plug it in here that's okay. technically what you have to do right with the hydros the, the the configuration is not attached to anything okay. so on the configuration there's a list and then on the list there's what we call output device and if you click on the output device then it'll tell you then it'll ask you which outlet is it connected to yeah. so when you had it on the out when you go to your configuration you hold heater output device you had it on two let's say you had it on two mm -hmm. so then i would just click on two and then it would show me three, four, five, whatever was available. So I would have mm. just gone to three, uploaded the changes and every configuration, oh, everything went from nice. two <laughs> to three. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's okay. It, 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 something that I've told people for years, it's, it's very difficult for somebody that has very good knowledge of the, of a previous controller to yeah. move into this controller. It, it, the, the biggest, the, uh, the biggest example I can give you is somebody going from a PC mm. to a Mac. Yeah. Yeah, and it's completely going different. From a, you see everything go, weird over there. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and from a Mac to a PC. Yeah. It's actually easier for somebody that has never had a computer, a, a, an a, a aquarium controller to pick up the hydros because they don't have those preconditions that, hey, this yeah. should work this way because this is right. the way I know how it works. And yeah. it's like, no, this is the way you know how it works, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way to do it. Right. Yeah. All so right. that's how we do it. I'm going to throw another thing on the screen here. Let me go back to our little controller board image. And so mm -hmm. this, I want to show everyone, this isn't the Hydros thing. This is a Mark Levinson thing. Hmm. So in the corner of the controller board in the background is a power strip right here. 
It doesn't say Hydros, does it, Carlos? It says Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is standing up with the orange cord that, or the yellow cord that comes out of it pointing down. So somehow water splashed down the back of the tank and <sighs> followed that cable. I don't oh, want wait. it to find its way into the power strip. So I've got it standing up. What would be even better is for me to put screws on that stand and mount it in the cabinet with the cord coming down so it can't, water can't follow the path of the wire into the power strip itself. Yeah. But I just want to show you guys, I did this. I didn't lay it flat behind the controller board, which many people might think, oh, I can just hide it, not see it. And the only thing plugged in there, well, there's three things plugged in. The main cord is the XP8, the big black one. Mm -hmm. Underneath it is a white cord with like a power supply that feeds my webcam that looks at this tank. And then mm -hmm. the third cord on the bottom is the one that plugs into the UPS. So those mm -hmm. are the three things that run. Everything else, aquarium gear is plugged into the Hydros. So this is my, you know, my, when I did my simulated power outage, I just hit the off button to the power strip and killed the strip and wanted to right. see would my battery backup work and would my air stone continue and it worked perfectly. So if you guys have power strips, make sure that they are standing. They're not laying in the bottom of the stand where they can get filled with water. If you can, screw them into the stand on the back, which I'll, like yes. I said, I'll probably just do that next. But I wanted to show you how I did this and how the wires are arranged a little bit. And also if I get rid of this image, you can see in the bottom of the stand, there's some white stuff on the left and on the right of that stand. That is the Hydro Sense water mm. rope. And it's, it, I mean, this tank has no holes drilled in it. So it would, be a, it would be really hard for water to somehow find its way inside the stand. But if it did, the rope would notify me that it's wet and that mm -hmm. I need to look at it. So, I mean, for example, I've got that air pump with tubing leading all the way up into the tank into an air stone. You can see the red check valve right there to the left of the air pump. But if there was no check valve, water could siphon very slowly through that airline tubing while the air pumps off yes. during the power outage. And it could be filling the stand with an inch of water. And then when power came on, the hydros would say, I have a wet rope, alert, alert, alert. Correct. <laughs> and I would be notified. But the nice thing about this rope is you can shake it off pretty quickly if you were to, I, I coiled it so it's kind of really in there. but. You can basically dry it off and it will turn itself off pretty quickly. It's it's yes. not like you have to buy a new rope or anything like that. It's there for you. And so that's why in my app, I have a thing. I think I named it Wet Spot. <laughs> because that's the spot that got wet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually made out of plastic. It's called conductive plastic. And honestly, uh, Mark, it's been around for years. It's uh, been around for years. It's not something let's that is not an innovation. It's been around for years. It's just that we decided it's like, hey, why can't we bring this into the um, uh, into the hobby? Because it yeah. works really well. I've heard rumors, the reasons mm -hmm. that the I've heard things that, you know, one of the for people again, this is through somebody else, somebody else, somebody else sure. that they, they didn't want to bring it because you can't put, you can't really put the thing down into the floor, you yeah. know, but there's double sided, there's clips, there's all sorts of things that you can use in order to get that thing and to get that in there. If to you want to protect yeah, your, yeah, if you get, if you want to get your floors protected, a single spot, right. is not going to do it. You have to have multiple spots because you never know how the water is going to go once mm -hmm. it hits the floor. Okay, I'll show you guys one more thing. We'll go back to the slide one last time. Uh, like, where did it go? Here we go. So I've got this guy right here I want to show you in case you, some of you thought, well, he never talked about this thing right here. So this right here is the controller for my Nero 5. Mm -hmm. The Nero 5 pump is my in-tank flow. And technically, I could have gone with a Nero 3. It would have been fine as well because the tank's a 27-gallon. And I have an even smaller footprint on the side of the tank, but I had the five in stock. I said, I'm putting on this tank because I don't think threes are even available for a while. There was some kind of okay. shortage or something like usual. So mm. I've got this guy in here. And like I said, the Nero 5, Nero 3, Nero 7, none of them have any battery backup option. I could mm -hmm. plug it into my UPS, but then to keep that circulating and the air stone would, would lessen the length that that UPS could run. So yes. I chose not to, I let the Airstone do its job. And the reason that I like the Airstone so much, it's not that it's just adding magical oxygen, it's also creating circulation in the tank. Mm -hmm. Not much, but it's movement versus stagnant water where everything is just gonna go up in smoke. And that's all you need. 
that's definitely all you need. Um, you know, we, we, we want to work with everybody. Uh, I think that's, that's something that hydros, you know, I, I always say is like, we want to work with everybody and we actually mean it. Yeah. We actually mean that we want to work. A lot of companies say that they want to work with everybody, but then in the, you know, behind closed doors is, oh, I'm only going to work with, with companies that have products that don't compete against us. Mm. And that's not what we want to do. I mean, it's like, you know, yeah. Hydros was born out of the need of everybody at Coralview having a hodgepodge of devices. And it's like, how can we make them work together? But the problem is that there are manufacturers that have made business decisions, whether it's mm -hmm. right, wrong, it's, it's not for us to decide because it's not our company. We're not the one footing the bills, yeah. but they have decided that they're, they're the, they're only going to let their own controllers work and control their equipment right. yeah, and it, they don't allow, a... and it don't allow it anything else. It's like a wall, they call it a, a garden wall or wall garden. I was going to say proprietary, but yeah. Yes, exactly. So it, it's sad. And I, I think it's sad that the, some of the manufacturers out there, they're going towards that instead mm -hmm. of opening it up. So, you know, it's, I get questions. It's like, when are you going to be compatible with this? And when are you going to be compatible yeah. with that? And the, yeah. the, the answer is, it's actually not that complicated. It's like, Hey, it's like you, why don't you go and ask them? Yeah. Because at the end of the day is they have to let us connect to their devices. They have right. to let us take over. And yeah. if, if they don't allow that, then there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. I saw a post the other day where a guy in the Neptune group, he said, I'm getting the apex junior and I want to connect my Alcatronic to control my Calcium, most likely alkalinity, alkatronic to cell alkalinity. It wasn't that. It was like a totally, like a third thing, like um, okay. like my 3D printer. <laughs> and I was like, there is no way you're getting these three com different brand companies to talk to each other and do what you're trying to do. And one guy mm -hmm. said, well, if you got the Trident, at least part of it. And I was like, this is not a thing. You, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I just don't go to the Ford house to get my Toyota parts. And I don't stop by the... Um, I don't know what I'm going to say, the pizza place to get my oil change. I mean, there's well, certain things you cannot do. The other 80% can't. Right. And, and whether the 20% likes the 80% or the 80% likes the 20% yeah. as a company that you're mm -hmm. selling a product in order for the product to be successful and to actually give you a return. Cause at the end yeah. of the day, we all want to make a little money for right. our trouble. Yeah. You have to sell to both, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You have to sell to both and you have to cater to both. And that's a very fine line that we have to, that we have to walk because at the end of the day, the, the problem that we've had with hydros or the problem that we had at first at hydros is the people, people think that because we have an app with a WYSI wig that asks you questions and forms, they think that it's simple, that actually doesn't let you do anything complicated. Uh -huh. And the truth of the matter is that the hydros actually allows you to do far more complex things than the other controllers can. Yeah. I do find yeah. there's a whole subset of stuff I totally ignore because I don't know what it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's like, um, we I call know it, exactly we, what I sound like as I'm saying these words out yeah, loud. Like, oh, you're just no. scared of touching anything. I'm like, yeah, I kind of am. <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get into, I don't want to get into the technical part of it because I, again, I, I'm, I'm, this, this is more, I, I, I like, I like the 80, I like the 80%. I'm a technical mm -hmm. person, but I, I like the 80% people there. And it's, yeah. and you know, it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I don't have the brains for a doctor, but I'm not going right. to tell a doctor how to do their work Yeah, because I don't know anything about it. Right. So, but you know, we call it conditioning, conditional, mm -hmm. um, statements. And what you do is a conditional statement. is like, if a and B then do something else. Okay. The keyword is, and if a and B, so if the two things happen, yeah. then do this. But yeah. there's also, if A or B happen, yeah. then do this. Now, right. most of the other controllers only allow you and. Mm -hmm. So if one thing and the other thing happens, then you do yeah. it. It's, it's a building blocks. Right. But the, the hydros actually allows you to do both. So you can say, if my pH and my alkalinity mm -hmm. are this, then turn off my calcium reactor. Yeah. That you can do in any controller. Right. But if you say, if my pH or my alkalinity, if one of the two is true, 
then do this. That's something that is okay. a lot more complicated to do on other yeah. controllers. Okay. But on the hydros, on the hydros, it's just one little drop down that says and or or. Yeah. That's well, listen, it. we got a super chat from Luis, and he was saying, uh, "I'm going to start dosing caulk with my hydros X3, uh, the Meckley method. Good luck." And he says, "Can I use my Versa with a hydros?" So, are they talking yet? Is this something you guys have worked on, or? Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Go back to the conversation <laughs> we had was it five minutes ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I was yeah, wondering. I'm, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. We we want to work with Versa. We want to work with the other company, the other companies. But the problem is that once you upgrade to a certain firmware, yeah. then they lock you. They lock you into their into their world. Okay. That's what they want to do. Whether it's right or wrong, it's not for us to. The say, only because, thing I could think you could do is you would kill the power to the Versa if it was plugged into an XP8 or correct. whatever associated model. Correct. But you can, you then when shut, it turns you... back on, won't it be behind schedule? Or I don't know, because the Versa was d powerless for X amount of hours. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Does the, do, the, do, the, do, the, do, this, do those pumps have a real-time chip or something? Can they keep the clock or do they have to connect back to the app? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have no idea. I can tell you oh, I've yes. taken one apart because I accidentally dropped it in my sump one day. Oops. And I was like, no, it's an expensive doser. I must save it. And there was stuff in there that was electronic. <laughs> I said, okay. The I mean, there was a little, there was a circuit board. But I just wasn't, I don't know what's on the board specifically. I just drowned it in rubbing alcohol. And I was looking for any kind of salt damage. And I'm still using it. It's still running. So I'm glad okay. I was able to salvage it. So are we talking about the ver is the you know, and this is the doser. Versa, is that is that the dosing pump? I'm sorry. I thought we were from talking Ecotech. about the No, versus uh, from know, Ecotech. What? No, I'm I'm think I was thinking Vectra, which is uh, the actual well, return. So it's so, also Ecotech, but yeah. So but the Versa the Versa actually there's a little trick that you can do. Okay. Okay. So the Versa, I think, I think still if they haven't changed it, there's the, the Versa has three particular modes, mm -hmm. which is a uh, the, the, one of the modes is called manual mode or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And what it does is if you put it in that mode, as soon as you turn on the pump, it starts running hmm. a, okay. at, at, a pre, at a predetermined speed that you set right. on the app. Yeah. So let's say you said you said the manual mode and you say 40 milliliters per minute. I think yeah. that's how it works. Okay. And then what it does is as soon as you unplug it, it stops. When you plug it in, okay. it starts when you plug it. So you can actually put it on your XP8 and okay. have the hydros turn it on and off and on and off. Now on the hydros, when you declare a doser, a simple doser, we call it a simple doser, you mm -hmm. tell it, okay, the simple doser is on outlet number one of the XP8 and it runs at 40 milliliters per minute. Right. So with that information, now the hydros knows that if you want to dose 40 milliliters, it runs it for 50 seconds. So what it will do is it'll turn the XP8 outlet one and then 60 seconds later, it'll turn it okay. back off. So okay. then the brain, the, the hydros becomes the brains. What you cannot have is you cannot have two brains trying to control the same thing without the brains communicating to each other. So you right. have to turn, you have to turn the, you have to turn the, the Versa in what we would call a dumb doser. I was going to say, you're making it a dummy. Yeah. You're making yeah, it a dummy and it's, and it's, and yeah. it's not because it's a bad product. It's just right. in, in computer. You're just killing it, away just, the function it came with. It's, it's, you're just telling it, okay, yeah. I don't need you to think. I just need you to right. do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Huh. So you can do the Versa, but you have to, you have to go into that mode. And I believe you have to specify and you have to tell it what speed in order okay, for so you let's to pretend, change Let's just go with that. Let's talk about that exact you know, recommendation. You said, um, 40 milliliters. That's what we're gonna put in, and you mm -hmm. said every time it turns on, it puts in forty. So, mm -hmm. if no, it, every time, every turn, every time it turns on, it goes at the flow rate of forty, but you still have to specify how how long you're gonna turn it on for. Okay, well, I'm just trying to figure. The, okay, I see what you're saying. Oh, got it. All right, so it's not like a okay, that makes more sense. So you're telling it, I want you to run forty milliliters per, or let's just say ten milliliters per minute for a hundred minutes, you know, let's just use some re real easy numbers because mm -hmm. we're trying to put in a thousand milliliters for the day, I guess, exactly. um, of Kalkwasser. And yes. then you turn it off because you've hit your desired alkalinity level or, or you've hit your desired pH level. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to be off until it's just going to turn off. So it doesn't add any more, mm -hmm. but 
it's in auto mode, not off mode. It's in auto, but the, the hydro stopped it from flowing anymore to avoid an overdose. And then the next day when it should come on again at like 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., mm -hmm. it will try again. And it might only get to 3 p.m. because it's hit that number again. Is that is that kind of how I'm understanding what you're describing or am I no, way off base? No, 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 no. What you do is I, I think you might be, um, let's simplify it. So you have, let's take the Versa name out of the equation. Okay. It's just you're turning the Versa into a pump Right. that when you turn it on, it runs at a particular rate. Right. So if you know what the rate of the pump is, then in order to get a specified volume, you just have to run it for a specific amount of time. Right. But so, why plug into the hydros at all if you're doing that? Then the, it can just be standalone. It can be a dummy pump. Every day comes on for six right. hours and puts in a thousand millers. But I thought he wants to put it in because he's dosing caulk. He doesn't want to overdose. He's using his hydros to warn him or at least yeah, no, kill the power to that pump to stop the bleeding. But right. then how does it ever restart again? That's where I was trying to kind of so I, I was no, thinking each day, but you know, I've picked a six hour window, but it got me too much. So I, mm -hmm. it stopped at five and then tomorrow it's going to go again. Maybe it'll go all the way to the six hours. Maybe it'll go to four hours. I don't know. That's what I'm trying See, to figure out. So in our, in our, when we, when you're developing a controller and you're doing that, you can't only think of one situation. You have to think of a lot of situations. So yes, yeah. that situation you're doing in there. What I'm thinking of is somebody that is, that is, um, that wants to use the, the Versa with the hydros to dose 40 milliliters of, or a hundred milliliters of liquid, yeah. you know, and divide that by 10 okay. and do that and, and do that 10 times a day. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then the, so then when that happens, then, or do it, you know, let's say 120 milliliters <laughs> at 12 times a day. Yeah. So what you're going to do it divided by, by, by 12 times. So what the hydros will do is the hydros knows that it's going to run, that the pump runs at 40 milliliters per minute. So therefore, if I'm going to run for 10 minutes for 10 milliliters, then I'm going to run the pump for like eight seconds, I think, mm -hmm. something like that, eight seconds like that. So then at midnight, it'll, it'll turn on the pump for eight seconds because the hydros expects, you told the hydros that this pump runs at a rate of 40 milliliters per minute. Yeah. Therefore, I'm going to turn it for eight seconds. I'm going to shut it off. That tells me that it's 10 milliliters. Then two hours later, do it again and do it again, do it again. So the hydros gets to control. The hydros gets to count how many seconds it runs for based okay. on the volume that you ask for it. All right. See, for me, I'm thinking beyond that. I, I understand you need to get a certain amount in at a certain time of day, mm -hmm. but I'm all about the prevention part, especially call oh, The one absolutely. thing I don't trust on this planet is call as everyone knows. And I, I even, Chris talked me into buying the powder. It's still new in the box. So I have not <laughs> actually tried to use it. Sure. But if I did something, I'd want it to stop. Now, one other thing that occurred to me you know, from our previous conversation in this chat was that if you had the Versa plugged into your XP8 or the Wi-Fi outlet, the smart one, okay. you would be able to power monitor that it, it was running, that it actually yes. ran. But then again, all it is is the head turned. It doesn't mean the liquid came out the tube because the tube could be clogged. Correct. So what I in my tank, in this system right here, I use Kaltwasser. Um, uh, but on the hydros, we have a preset. It's called Kaltwasser. So when you add an outlet, there's uh, there's multiple presets: heater, skimmer, calcium okay. reactor. But there's also a calc reactor. And if you go into that calc reactor preset, mm -hmm. it asks you. Okay, it asks you the basic questions. Okay, where's your feed? Where's the feed pump to the calc reactor? Where's your stirrer? Where's all the basic stuff? Mm -hmm. But then in addition to that, it asks you. Okay, who? Where's your pH monitor? Right. You drop down and say pH monitor. Then it's going to give you a sliding rule. And it mm -hmm. said, okay, what's your pH range? Yeah. So I, I'm setting it up 7.2 to 7.4, which means that if the pH is lower than 7.2, turn on the calc reactor. If the pH is higher than 7.4, turn off the calc reactor. Okay. But then in that addition sounds like a calcium to, reactor. <clears throat> yeah, I know. But, but, but the calc reactor is the same thing. It works the same way. Because if, you're, if your pH goes too high, you don't want to keep adding caulk. That's my point. So I was thinking, yeah. you know, you're, you're going to have the pH probe in the hydros watch what's happening. And, you know, you've got this thing set up to run six hours. We're like, no, don't run it for all six. We've got exactly. to stop at five. Exactly. But then no, the I, next I, I, day, it'll just try again for the six-hour window, right? Exactly. Is that how so I was in a, Yeah. In addition to that, that preset. So now I've, I've set, 
I've set the pH range. Now the next field on this WYSIWYG is asking you, where is your alkalinity input? Yeah. Now you can leave it if you don't. If you're one of those people that doesn't measure alkalinity, then yeah. you just leave it as none. It's fine. Yeah. But if right. you measure alkalinity, then you select the alkalinity. It could be the KH care. It could be the Alcatronic. Right. It could be the new X10 coming up soon. Yeah. But what it does, and then as soon as you do that, then you get a slider that says, "Okay, what's your what's your alkalinity yeah. range?" So then and that's I what Luis go, just gave us right here. He yes. said he wants a low range of 8.25 and a high of 8.5. Exactly. So he wants it to dose based on pH. But what I'm saying is, is we at we at Coralview and Hydros, we didn't stop there. We said it's like, wait a minute, calc is about alkalinity too, mm -hmm. and you can easily run away your alkalinity if you're just monitoring your pH. You can run away your alkalinity can run away. It can. It can. So yeah. why don't we actually give people the option to also do that? So in okay. this in this wissy wig, you mm -hmm. have the option of choosing the pH and the option if optional of choosing the alkalinity. So gotcha. then the software does it automatically and it tells you, you don't have to, the problem with the other controllers that I know is that something as complicated as that, yeah. you can't do it through a WYSIWYG. You have to write the code. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and you and I have had this conversation for years <laughs> about writing code. Oh yeah. I would watch your yeah. videos to figure out how to do certain <laughs> things because it was a little confused and you had a brain for it. I, I can, I can muddle my way through. I mean, I'm not a total moron. I can definitely do some stuff. No, I don't. But there are some times where I'm just kind of stumped. I'm like, oh, who knows this better than I do? And I'm like, Carlos makes videos. I'll find something on this. And there was, you made lots of tutorials for the Apex back in the day. I did. I did. And that was back, back in the day was one of those things where, you know, because it was the only controller in the market. Yep. And we at Coralview, we wanted to make it easier for our, for our customers to use the, right. uh, the tutorial. I mean, you know, we are the ones that brought in, we're the ones that started, that brought in zero to 10 to the masses because yeah. we had that gyre and everybody wanted to use the gyre, but there was no direct interface between the apex and the gyre. So we created right. the gym, but then we had to educate people on zero to 10 because nobody knew about zero to 10 right. because prior to that, nobody actually ever used it. It was there, but nobody yeah. actually used it. <laughs> so that's the advantage of it. It's like we, and we, and I, we talked about this earlier today. It's like, coming into the game a little bit late gives us that does give us that upper hand sure in in that particular thing that i, I knew the other controller very well yeah so when we when we decided to do the hydros it was what typical people you know what people say is like well if if you want to create something if you want something better then create it yourself yeah you know yeah. what i say it's like yeah, yeah they always yeah, say that yeah yeah. <clears throat> yeah if you want so, if you don't like something then you know, you could always create it yourself. Yep. And most people, most of us can't do it because we don't have the knowledge. Right. But at Corby, we're like, you know, it's like, well, if you create something, then if we create it ourselves, like we're, we looked at each other, it's like, wait a minute, we can do this. Yeah. So then we, then we did. Right. You know, and uh, I should mention that you guys are making the hydros here in the US. Yes. The entire thing. I mean, I don't know. Does anything come from China? The well, shell? you know what? Let's 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 <laughs> let's let's be on let's be honest. And no, you know, and you'll see this in everything. And I think I I saw it on something, and I thought that was genius. It's mm -hmm. it's globally sourced, <laughs> but okay. it's but it's assembled in the U.S. Because it's let's be honest, there yeah. is there is nothing out. I I, I would be hard to yeah. find something out there that hasn't been touched by, not necessarily China. Yeah but yeah. somewhere outside the US, there's nothing, you know. I was at the it's... hardware store yesterday and I was looking for a paper towel holder and they only mm -hmm. had one in stock and it was white plastic. I was like, it's not really what I wanted. And it was like $9. Yeah. But on the tag, on the cardboard that is wrapped around this plastic frame is a little American flag and says made in the US. And I'm like, the cardboard is made in the US or the plastic part, you know? But they said, no, exactly. we made this whole thing in the US. I was like, all right, you got my nine bucks. And I, I mean, I don't know, you know, I just bought it. Yeah. I needed one anyway. So I was like, do I really need to go to Walmart to find the China special? <laughs> it's like, I'll just get this and move on with my life. And it was just but, funny because I was wondering if maybe the cardboard was assembled in the U.S. and someone did a staple, but the inside yeah. of it was, you know, from a container ship from overseas. No, no. Um, uh, you know, it's like what we do is at at Slidell at uh, Coralview. Yeah. 
and this is big kudos. I mean, again, I'm not, you know, I work for Coralview, so I see this stuff happening and all that. And this is yeah. stuff that sometimes doesn't get out of, get out enough to the people. It's like Coralview pet industry during COVID had yeah. some of the most amazing years because mm -hmm. everybody was home. And right. if you're home, you're staring at your tank. And if you're staring at your tank, you're working on, you're it. like, okay, you're working on it. And if you're yeah. working on it, you get new stuff. So mm -hmm. we were, everybody else was every single industry was going down right. and the pet industry was going up. That's true. And what Dave and Brand, Dave and Brandy, the owners of Coral, you did is instead of grabbing that and just hoarding it or, yeah. or making it, you know, or buying a new house or, or yeah. getting a, you know, getting, getting a plane or whatever it is that you do, <laughs> they turn, they turn around and grab those profits and yeah. then invest it into an SMT assembly machine. And yeah. what an SMT assembly machine is, is the machine that, that creates those green, everything else, everything that your computers are, everything, they have this green PCB board. And on the PCB yeah. board, there's a whole bunch of capacitors, chips, resistors, yeah. and everything in there. Yeah. So what they did is they went out and purchased, they, they, they spent, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars on yeah. those machines. And now we get the boards blank and then right. we lay the, we lay the chips. So we actually get to make the components there. Yeah. It's neat. It, ma it makes it easier for us to do, um, uh, fix things if something is wrong, but at the same time, what also helps us is that if we're developing, if we're developing a new product, we don't have to send those diagrams, sorry, those diagrams to, to overseas, yeah. wait a month, a month and a half to get them right. back. Yeah. test them, find the mistakes, then send them again. Yeah. That process is 24 to 36 hours for us. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, yeah, it's in house. All right. Let me answer it's this one question here for one of the users, uh, one of the viewers. Mm -hmm. So Panopolis has a RO system of mine that he bought years ago and he wanted to know which membrane he has. I just wanted to let you know, I sell two different membranes on my website. One is for the hundred gallon a day system, which is the basic system that has three housings underneath. And then I have another membrane, it's the 150 gallon a day for the bigger one that I call the boosted RODI system. That one has a booster pump on the top, a dual TDS meter. That would need the 150 gallon a day membrane. So if you don't have a booster pump built into your unit, you have the 100 gallon a day system. And so now you know which membrane to get from my website. And it's really easy to find in the shop. There's a search thing, you just type in membrane. It'll show you the two I have and you can pick which one you like. When I sell you your new membrane, it will include a brand new flow restrictor. Make sure you swap that out at the same time because the flow restrictor can either plug up, wear out, or fail. And so I, I just include a new one with every membrane. That's how I've been selling them for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to handle that because I saw it and I didn't want to ignore it. He also wanted to know, <laughs> same person, does Carlos know where I can get the bubble blaster pump for more than an arm and a leg? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just put it this way. You get, you pay, you get what you pay for. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about it. It's like, and it, this is a, well, I mean, ask anybody online when it comes to reef octopus pumps, mm -hmm. they're just good pumps. Yeah. The bubble blaster are good pumps. The various pumps are good pumps and they, they come and, and you, you, I'm sorry, people, they, it's, if you want quality, it does come with a higher yeah. cost. It's just the way it's just kind of how I works. shop anyway. I mean, I yes. hate it, but at the same time, I'm like, fine. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes I feel really ripped off by certain things. It just seems so high. I OK, last mm -hmm. year I'm building my new building and I'd spent a lot of money on concrete. I spent a lot of money on something else. I spent a lot of money on something else. So when it was time to put in my nice floor, because at first I thought I'll paint the concrete and then I thought eh, I'll do resin eh, I'll do this. Oh, I'll do the garage thing. I don't know. I found a company and I just called them and said, what does it cost? They said, oh, we need to come out and give you a quote. I'm like, no, that sounds expensive. If you can tell me on the phone what this costs, it's affordable. And he's like, we'll just send a guy out. He'll, are you available tomorrow or Thursday or whatever it was? It was, no, it was Tuesday. And so he came on Tuesday. I walked him out there. We look, you know, here's this shell of a building, brand new concrete that has, that is basically virgin concrete. Hasn't had anything done to ruin it. There's no oil or anything in there. I said, all right, how much? And he looked at it and he said, this is going to be $3,000. I said, I knew you were going to come up with some high dollar thing. I don't, I don't want to pay three grand. And I said, and you know what? I'm not even haggling. I am literally just saying, I'm sick of these big bills because of COVID, because everything costs more. I said, mm -hmm. I want it for less. And he just looked at me and he said, all right, here's what I can do. 
And he said, I will do it for you. I need to keep my guys working. It was, it was I think, February, bad time mm-hmm. of year, less work. He said, and I said, and I did say, if I pay you cash, no credit card, what's my deal? You know, there's got to be mm-hmm. some savings here. And he just said, I can do it for 2500 And I, st- I mean, I wanted to hear 1200 honestly. <laughs> I wanted much less, okay? Because I just thought three grand for 400 square feet, it's insane. It's, n- it's a two-car garage. It's not big. You know how big that is if it's two cars. So anyway, he said, I want to keep my guys working. Let's do 2500 cash. And I was just like, fine. Just, because I, I didn't want to pay it. I, I was sick of spending money, but I felt like this is something that's going to last. It's super durable. It's, the stuff is called polyaspartic. It's not just a two-part resin. And it's basically the same stuff they put in the bedliner of trucks. It's like okay. designed to handle the sun, the hail, throwing mm-hmm. crap in there, dragging it out, boulders mm-hmm. and lumber and all. It never peels off if it's done right. And so I said, okay. And he said, listen, it's lifetime warranty. If you do anything to mess this up, we will come out and we will blend in that spot and fix it. You'll never know. And I thought, okay, all right, all right. You talked me into it. And I paid him. And I've gotten a thousand compliments on that floor. I mean, everyone's like, I love yeah. it. But it was, I just had to pay more than I wanted. Like you were saying, sometimes it just costs you more for, for, for quality. Well, and I wanted also, quality, it's... but I was just getting a little bit, you know, a little burned out on people getting yeah. high dollars at me every time I asked for anything. Well, and it's all, it also, you know, it, it, it reminds me of, you know, I don't want to sound bad, but it's like today we pay, we pony up $400 for a frag that is the size of a pinky yep. nail. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's $400. And, 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 I, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not being, I'm, I'm, I'm being generalistic in terms of this. It's like, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't even question it. But when they turn around and try to buy the hardware that is going to keep this four hundred dollar frag alive, yeah, they 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 want to pay nothing, nothing, <laughs> pennies. And it, it's like, it makes no yeah. sense to yeah. me. Yeah, no, I agree. It makes no sense to me. It's like it's like it's like buying, it's like buying a super expensive car yeah. and just getting the cheapest the frame oil filter. And, no, the insur- <laughs> you know, just go and find the cheapest insurance on yeah. some, you know, hole in the wall building, right. you know, okay, I'll take that insurance on, on yeah. my really, really expensive car. Yeah, it yeah. makes no sense. Right. Um, uh, but, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know, I can't, you know, if, if somebody wants, uh, you know, if somebody wants, uh, you know, there's, there, there are there are products for every budget. Let me put it this sure. way. Sure. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's there's cars for every budget. You know, there's there's pumps for every budget. So if if yeah. if if the if the bubble blaster is not your cup of tea, <laughs> then we we have we there are other options that we have yeah. that may suit that may better fit your current situation. Current I bet needs. you guys make a Kamor pump and they'll just go right there in that spot and just dose <laughs> it quietly. <laughs> just dose that skimmer a milliliter a minute. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I, you know, it's, I always, I always wonder when this, this bubble is going to burst of those, yeah. the $400 frags because Never. you and I have, you and I have been in the hobby for long enough yeah. that you remember yeah. when it was $25 for oh, yeah. a colony. Oh yeah. Now it's four hundred dollars for a frag, and people, three branches yeah. on a frag does not constitute a colony. It no. doesn't. No. It is not Listen, a colony. I got a, it's still I got a frag. quick story uh, from back in the day in the early two thousands. Our club was doing a frag swap, and you know that means hot, and this is what a frag swap used to be. People yeah. would show up with a cooler full of Ziploc bags. You were lucky if they wrote the name on the bag. I mean, it yes. was, it was, and then they, and you might have to reach in the cooler to hold up a brown stick or you pick up another one and it's a brown polyp or you pick up another thing and it's just a nugget of, I don't even know what this is because it's closed up. Sometimes they put them out on a table and you could see the bags with their puddle of water and you're thinking that might be a green slimer. I'm not sure. It's weird looking, uh, whatever. And anyway, and then a few people would actually show up with some kind of a small aquarium and they might put some corals in there. 
but there was this one guy in our club. He had a stunning reef tank. It was state of the art. I mean, it was just gorgeous. And it was SPS from end to end. And all the corals were like a certain shape. One was like a pear. One was like an apple. One was like a pumpkin. One was flat like a table. I mean, it was really cool. It was not the wild stuff that grows in my reef that just goes whichever direction it wants like I didn't brush my hair, right? Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, how do you do this? He says, well, I trim them. I'm like, into the shape of a pear? I mean, is that how this... Anyway, point it. I'm good enough track. He shows up. He's got 40 bags on the table. Every bag is the exact same. They're not Ziplocs. They're like perfect little bags, puddle of water, name written on the bag, and you can get any of these corals from his tank. And they were like $55, $65 a piece. And I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, what do you mean? I said, why are you charging so much for frags? Frags shouldn't be this much. The whole colony is $25. You can't charge this much for a frag. And he's like, these are nice corals, Mark. And I'm like, you're charging too much. This is not right. <laughs> Fast forward, that same man opened up a fish store. <laughs> and, yep. And he's probably selling four hundred dollar frags to this day. Which I mean, that's fine. Uh, it, it's, if it's, people will pay for it, that's fine. He did spend a lot of time backing up each of those, labeling each one, mm -hmm. and he said to me. And now here's the thing, because we all have a different opinions, we all have different truths, and he said, if I sell you this really pretty red planet or whatever it was for five dollars and it dies, do you even care? And I was like, yes! He goes, no, you don't, it was five bucks. But if you paid me $65 for that piece, you're gonna make sure it doesn't die. And I was just like, I hear you, but... <laughs> so I just kind of walked away and found my friends with the $20 frags again, you know, but... Yeah. But it was, it was interesting. And so it's not always completely wrong that a price is what it is, but sometimes the prices are gonna be way out of reach where I'm just like, not me. Someone else can get it. Yep. Yeah. Not me. And that's again, just like the pump. There's a there's there's a different budgets. There's different corals yep. corals for different budgets. Yep. Uh, you know the you know. But the difficult thing for myself and I think for you is that we've seen the evolution. You know, yep. we we've both been around for 20, 20 years plus. Yep. So we've seen what it was before, and now yep. we see what it is now. And it is it's it's a hard it's it's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. Yeah, it can be. I mean, I got a really nice coral at um, Aquashella that they wanted way too much for. They did, mm -hmm. and I said, "How much is that?" And he told me, and I was like, "I'm not paying that." And then he said, "What would you give me?" And I, of course, I, I, I just made the joke he, without even laughing. I was like, five bucks." And he was just like, "No, seriously, what would what would you really offer?" And I said, "If I tell you what I really would offer, you're going to be offended." And he mm -hmm. said, "Just try me." And I said, "Look, I'll say it. You can still say no because it's not close to what you asked." And I said, "I'd give you a hundred bucks." And he was just like, "Hang on, what did we pay for that?" And then finally he says, you know what, Mark, if you'll mention this coral on your YouTube, we'll go ahead and we'll give you it for the hundred dollars. So I have this really pretty coral in my tank now. And, you know, it was basically paid endorsement or however you want to call it. You know, he yes. gave me a discount to mention the company. And so I will be doing that here in an upcoming, you know, Reef Diary because, you know, I said I would. But the point is, is that some things are just so high that I usually just say no thanks. Just like I would do in any other store. I just pick yes. it up. I, I walk into any store. It doesn't matter if it's a supermarket or if it's a Target or if it's a, a place with crystals and jewelry or watches. I just pick it up. How much? Okay, put it back down. Yeah, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. And I just go for the one, you know, where's the section of what I might do? Or maybe I'll get nothing yeah. at all. It just comes down to my mood and how much is in my bank account. <laughs> of course. Of course. You know. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, off the subject, you know, it, it's it's just going back to it is you're spending all this money whatever whether you know because you know money is subjective yeah. you know 20 bucks for 20 bucks for you is different than 20 bucks for somebody else it's yeah that's the way yeah. it is so yeah. whatever you know whatever 20 bucks means to you mm -hmm. you know whether it's a lot of money or or maybe not you, yeah. you're still you're, you're buying the hardware to right. keep this alive no i agree uh, yeah. and i do like higher end equipment and higher end uh, controllers because mm -hmm. I feel like they are uh, protecting my investment of the uh, live, they're protecting the livestock for me. It's not really mm -hmm. the investment. It's not the money of the coral. It's not the money mm -hmm. of the fish. It's that the fish mm -hmm. is healthy and thriving, that the yes. coral is growing and looking great, that the tank yes. is holding up well. Caitlin's Reef, I'm kind of in this weird middle ground where it's not the best filtration. It's a very, I tried to keep it simple for a reason. And it, it's kind of, 
it's kind of my Achilles heel. It kind of irritates me a little bit because it, it doesn't look as I would expect it to, but mm -hmm. it's totally behaving like it totally should based on what's been put into it. Correct. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it, yeah, it, is, it is what it is, as they say, you know. Yeah. All right, well, we've gone way off track. Um, yep. <laughs> let's see if there's any questions. I know, I'm sorry, yeah. guys. Let's see if there's any questions. If you guys haven't put a question yet, please do. We are wrapping up the yes. stream here. We've been talking for an hour and a half. I'm sure Carlos has things to do. And uh, one person asked if it would be possible or beneficial to put an air stone inside the sump to get rid of detritus. And I would say rather than air stone, I would probably put a small power head, uh, not a bubble blaster, <laughs> Dude, but maybe gosh. like a CHA something, something cute, maxi jet, just some little thing that moves water to kind of keep circulation in there. And that could help mm -hmm. lift the detritus up enough that it could end up getting sucked into a protein skimmer. Or it might get sucked back, in a return or, pump and pushed back up into the tank back again. To, back into the tank. Right, right. Yeah. So you might want to, but you can always just siphon the detritus out too. Yes, you can I always vacuum a, it. I, I sell a attachment from uh, printed by th VCA. Yeah, and VCA. It yeah. connects. Yeah. It connects to a little tiny, um, a little tiny CHA pump, or it'll fit on a maxi jet yeah. and get your hands on one yeah. or an equivalent maxi jet pump. And you can hook that nozzle onto it and then put some tubing into a nearby bucket and you can just vacuum the bottom of your sump and you don't lose all the water. Now, if, if you, you can just put it want, into you a, can use a filter, shop vac. filter sock. Yeah, you can go into a filter sock and regenerate your water or you yeah. can use a shop vac and just pump out 20 gallons super duper fast as you try to get all the piles of dirt yeah. off the bottom of your sump. Yeah. So those are some techniques that work. Sometimes it's hard to clean out a sump, but it is good about once a year to move equipment, you know, if you're pulling the skimmer out for a deep clean, that's a perfect time to clean that zone. If you're yes. working on the return pump or you're taking the return pump out for maintenance, clean that section. Occasionally, mm -hmm. you should definitely clean your refugium because that's kind of a, a nutrient sink. And, you know, you got plants, pull the plants out, put them in the water change water and shake mm -hmm. them off a little bit and get them kind of cleaned off and then put them back in the refugium after you've siphoned out the crud out of the base of the refugium zone or the rubble or the sand. Uh, if that section's full of cyano, you could scrape it off all the walls and siphon all that out. And now you have a clean zone. Put the plants back in, set the light where it belongs, wipe the lens of the light so it's getting good penetration. And, you know, you're operational again, and that way you have a nice clean sump and your equipment. You just feel clean yourself. You know you've gotten rid of some stuff that's building up that needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's same. I would say the same thing with hardware. Um, you know, it's, it's, you can't expect the car to run for years if you don't yeah. do regular maintenance. So, you know, we, you can't expect the bubble blast. You can't expect the various pump to run for, for, yeah. for a year or two years and you've never taken it apart, you right. know, because you got to take it apart. You got to take it apart every few months and clean it up. Just like you take the car to do an oil change and then put yeah. it back in there. When you do that, you're just ensuring that the life of the pump is going to be extended. If you don't right. clean the pump, the life of the pump is going to be very, it's going to be short. I'm not going to say yeah. very short, but it's going to be short. I mean, yeah. we at Coralview, we try to make good products. They are good products, but they're not indestructible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, um, back to the bubble blaster for a second. It just occurred to me, uh, the shirt I'm wearing. So I, I look through my piles of shirts, and I do not have a Hydro's shirt. I don't know why. <gasps> Weird, right? I don't own one. Oh, no, I'm not asking okay, for a shirt. Okay, okay. No, I'm just saying I didn't have one. But he's complaining about the price of a bubble blaster, and I'm wearing the Abyss <laughs> shirt, <laughs> which is the arm and a leg pump, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is my return pump. That's a two thousand dollar return pump. So if the bubble Alex blaster is less than two grand, one. I know it's less than Armin. You know the bubble blaster is cheaper. So it just occurred yes. to me. I'm wearing the Abyss. That worked because I don't <laughs> have a. High it's all. It's it's relative. You know, price is relative when you really think it about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it yeah. is. It is relative. <laughs> yeah. No. You know, I say uh, here says can Carlos offer clear filter fleece in bulk. Mm. Um, I think if you have Richard, if you have a, if you have a store, um, um, you know, contact us, mm -hmm. you know, contact us. And then we will, uh, we will definitely make it, make it work with you. We'll work with you and all that. And I'm sure, you know, um, we sell, if you, if you, you know, it, it's all about quantity. If you buy a, a bunch of them, then yeah, let us know. 
let us yeah. know. But the website might not help you on that one. But if you just send us an email, support at coralview.com, we'll yeah. probably work, we'll definitely work something out. Yeah. Okay, let me get back to Hydros a little bit here. Um, sure. Because I have more thoughts. Uh, the rope is nice, but you also have a flat sensor that sits on the floor that yes. uh, that also, I mean, is one better than the other? Is what, which is your, what's under your tank right now? What do you it depend, it, it depends on the application. Let me put yep. it, I have both. I have both. Okay. So around my tank right there, there is a rope detector, but then I also have a Kaltwasser reactor. And okay. what I've done is I've had times where the Kaltwasser output gets clogged up and mm -hmm. then the water goes up, 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 and then it overflows the Kalp reactor. So okay. what I've done is what I do in that case is then I grab that little puck and I yeah. place it on top of my calc reactor right. so that if it happens, it's gonna, the water's going to overflow. It's going to go right in there and kill the, the, the feed pump. So it, there's no right or wrong. It just depends on the application. Do you have any sensors that hold on to stuff with a magnet? Like an optical right. sensor or something like Apex has. <laughs> do, you, yeah. do you have that, like where you can put one on a protein scammer that, where the cup is volcanoing, for example? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can. The, we have the we have both sensors. We have the regular um, the floaty sensors, okay, and then we also have the optical sensors. Because again, we're, you know, um, some people don't trust the optical sensors. Right, that's fine. Some people, okay. you know, like the old sensors. So we have both. Yeah, we do. Have so both. yeah, so if you had some kind of a sensor on your protein skimmer and the cup fills to the top, it would mm -hmm. you could then tell it turn off protein skimmer and the skimmer's exactly. just off and the cup is sitting with liquid and it's not. Making a big overflowing mess back into it. Right. We also have we also have a TDS meter that can connect to the hydros. Oh, nice. So you would yeah. is it like a live feed? So as the water's flowing through, you can watch the numbers change, or is it like checking once in a while? So no. So so the way it works is it's this is and this is kind of tricky. I mean, people ask the same question, and what I do is until until what I do is I take a few minutes and I'll and I'll show you what, and I'll explain how it works. Yeah. Those things is a magnetism. Those little probes. So when you have a TDS meter, there's two probes that stick out, yes. two platinum. What it right. does, it's a magnet, and okay. it's a magnet that is come, that is doing this stuff. So what happens is, what happens if you if you keep the magnet running, things attach to it, oh. and then and then things get, and then it more more attaches, more attaches, and then right. they can't communicate. Yeah, so yeah. you can, you a TDS meter, you run it only for a few minutes, okay. then you turn it off then the flow washes off what attached to it oh. and then you turn it on again so that every so you're actually flushing the probes that's neat. Every, that's that's how a tds meter works and that's why you never see a tds meter that you leave on all the time right well that. i was thinking because the hydros is yeah. always tracking and data and all no. that that you could kind of like say man it really no. rose but it came down like it was supposed to because no. tds creep so, you know so what it i was wondering is, if you could actually see it so what it does is it, 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 it senses, it turns itself on every five, every one hour. Oh, so every okay. one hour it senses for about five minutes and then it okay. shuts itself off and it right. does it again. And that's what it does. So it's not going to be real time, but again, yeah. that is the, I mean, you know, trying to educate people. That's the reason why you don't, you just don't leave the TDS meter all the time because yeah. it's a magnet. And it just I didn't know it, that and I yeah. sell the meters. <laughs> I've been yeah. using them for a long time, but they always turn off after 30 seconds. And I never knew why they turned off. I just have to hit the button again. Because, because again, they, TDS creep, I want to see how high it gets because that first 30 seconds, it goes way. I mean, it can go from yeah. zero to like a hundred to 180, it just, but it drops right. like a rock too. And so I like mm -hmm. to watch that. But right in the middle of that, it turns itself off. I'm like, ah, turn on again. You know, it's, yes. I can see the rest of the free fall. So on the hydros, on the hydros, you have that uh, you have, and it's for five minutes, and then it mm -hmm. turns itself on and on. So if your membrane is running for six hours, then okay. it'll check six times, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you'll get a notification. I'm sorry, excuse me. You'll get a notification if the TDS is is too high, okay. and then you get that in there, and then That's you can good. make it. Remember how I told you the if statement? Yeah. Right, so right. if the TDS is higher than this, then shut off the RODI unit and send me a notification does it have does hydros now sell solenoids then to shut off the ro unit absolutely actually the hydros has this little handy dandy thing it's um it's just like you have heaters skimmers outputs you also have an rodi output oh yes the rodi output will tell you then it, it uses two solenoids mm -hmm. and it uses a booster pump location 
Okay. So what it would do is yeah, you yeah. put a sol you put a solenoid on the feed mm -hmm. coming to the RDI unit, and yep. then you put a solenoid on the bypass okay. to flush the unit. Yeah. So what it would do is you tell the you tell the hydros, okay, I connected the solenoid to drive port number one. I connected mm -hmm. the feed to drive port number two. I connected the the, the booster pump to XPA number five. Mm -hmm. And what it will do is when you turn on the the uh, the uh, RLDI unit output, mm -hmm. the logic will open up the flush, yeah. open up the feed, run it for five minutes, allowing the unit to flush. It'll turn mm -hmm. on and then it'll wait. Then it'll turn off the, the bypass, right. the flush. So now it starts making water. It'll right. turn on the TDS meter, make sure the TDS is okay. Then every hour, it'll automatically open up the flush solenoid to turn on to flush the the unit oh. every hour at the same okay. time when it shuts when it shuts off it'll turn off the solen it'll it'll turn off the feed it'll turn off hmm. the flush it'll turn off the booster pump and everything so oh. with the hydros you can turn a, a a again dumb yeah rodi unit into yeah, yeah. a into a very smart unit that automatically flush itself and does all okay. the stuff on it on a on a on a on a on an hourly base all right neat and you also sell a wi-fi based fish feeder that looks like the Eheim uh, yes. device I've been so familiar with for so many years. Yes. yes. Is it plugging into the XP8 or is it plugging into a sense board or what's it plugging into? No, it's a it's a five volt um, USB connector. So you can okay. plug it into the you can plug it into the wall mm -hmm. because the because you, with the hydros because it's Wi-Fi. Yeah. You don't need the hydros doesn't need to turn it off or turn it on. The hydros right. just via yeah, Wi-Fi gives it the signal to rotate. So gotcha. what you do is you turn you turn you plug it into a dumb out power strip because it yeah, never has right. to turn off, and then the hydros will send the signal. Now you know that one, that one is I think it's like forty nine or or fifty nine dollars for the feeder for the feeders I think. Um, oh, it's on my website. I think it's less yeah. actually. I think it's thirty five. Yeah, or thirty nine ninety nine. I think it is. Um, uh, and the reason why we do that is because the hydros. You know we're we're not in the we're not in the business of making feeders, right. so we could have we could have grabbed an engineer and said, "Hey, create a feeder," but then we would have had to create the mold. We had to mm -hmm. pay for the the R and D and all yeah. the stuff and and go through the learning you know the 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 growing pains of creating yeah. a feeder. But we work with other companies, so we decided let's contact one of the most common you know companies out there for feeders and see if they right. can make a feeder for us. Let's take advantage of them being a yeah. feeders. If I want an electrician, I don't yeah. call a plumber to, to right. do electrician work. I'm going to call yeah. an electrician. You know, I so, was in Petco, I think it was, and I need an auto feeder. I need another Eheim. So I go to the shelf, and there it was, automatic fish feeder, you know, same one I've ever seen my whole life, right? I was like, perfect, mm -hmm. I'll take it. And as I'm walking down the aisle, there's turtles. And there was a turtle feeder made by Eheim. And I pick it up. And I hold up the other one, and they are the exact same product, except it says turtle. This one says fish. And the turtle one was $10 cheaper. <laughs> so I put the fish feeder back, and I bought my turtle feeder, and I fed Spock. <laughs> yeah. So I you mean, never that, know what's out there on the market. You, nev you never Thanks, know Ed. what's out there. Yeah, Ed found the link for know. the fish feeder. There you this go. This is right there. Um, there you go. So uh, that's another product that's new, uh, that is new to me. I didn't know you had a fish feeder until just recently. So mm -hmm. I got a couple to put in stock in case anyone needs one to go with their hydros. Mm -hmm. um, the X10 mm -hmm. is coming out this year? Or... Yes, actually. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it, we have it scheduled for the next couple months. Okay, great. Yes. And then when does the X12 come out? <laughs> 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 well, so y'all can... the x10 if you haven't seen it yet it's crazy looking so it's big and it's chunky and it's got four dosing pumps on the side and of course anyone's been the hobby knows when something breaks how do you fix it i mean that goes for anything uh with mm -hmm. the apex you've got your energy bar and you've got eight outlets and if one outlet dies how do you fix the dead outlet you know i mean it's really mm -hmm. hard to do and in the back you know i've been in this for so long that when we had the EB-8 and the EB-4, if you had a dead outlet, it was just dead. You're like, okay, I'll use the other five, or I'll use the other three, or whatever's yeah. left on the strip. I, I have a dead outlet, I'll put tape over it and put a little X yeah. through it like that one's done. But yeah. a doser mounted to my controller, that's a little different. I don't really want to have a dead doser. And so I was thinking, what right. are you guys going to do about that? And they taught us at Macna when they did the big reveal, 
they said we can go ahead and remove four screws and just pop it out and pop a brand new one in like batteries and you have a nice good doser again. I was like, well, I like that because you're not stuck with this beautiful device that has a dead component. On the no, side. no, it's it. They're, they're Camor stepper dosers. They're mm -hmm. stepper motors. And what you do is um, um, you literally you remove the, the four screws from the extent and pull it yeah. out. And then you just like a comp inside a computer, you'll see this white little connector with four yeah. pins and you pull that connector and that's the pump. Then yeah. you take the pump out, you get the new pump, plug it in, put it in the right. same spot, close it right. and you are done. I mean, we've it's made it so that- It's a neat looking thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, but the dosers are, are, are incorporated right into the control, the, the motherboard as we call it. Yeah, the brain. So yeah. the brain, exactly. So there's no chance of it getting lost in communication or mm. anything like that. The last thing you want, I get this question all the time. I get this all the time. It's like, when are you going to have a Wi-Fi dozer? Mm -hmm. And my answer is, really? Do you want a Wi-Fi dozer? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because here's the example I give a lot of the, the, the you know, I walk to stores and in stores, it's like, when are you going to have a Wi-Fi dozer? And I take my time, just like I explained the TDS meter to you. I take yeah. my time. Okay. A Wi-Fi dozer, what it's going to do is Wi-Fi devices are the controller sends the signal start. Okay, I'll start. I don't know when to stop. Right. I don't know nothing. I'm just going to start until you tell me stop. Yeah. Okay, that's what it does. It's a dumb thing. So, right. Mark, you say start, and I'll keep going until you say stop. Yeah. But what happens? It's if like you the, say, the guy at Olive Garden over yeah, the salad. Exactly. <laughs> So, so Mark, so Mark is going to, Mark is going to say, start. So I'm going to go this. And all of a sudden now we lose internet and we get disconnected. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing this. Right. Forever. I'm going to keep doing this forever <laughs> because Mark hasn't told me to stop. Right. So my question is, do you really want a Wi-Fi doser? Yeah. And once I explain it that way, they're like, no, I yeah. don't want a Wi-Fi doser. And that's the reason why we will never, we would probably never come out with a Wi-Fi doser for yeah. that particular reason. So I, I'm always afraid of of controllers that are sending a signal through Wi-Fi to a doser. It's yeah. all on the application, right? It's all on the application. Is it okay to have the lights on a Wi-Fi power strip? Yeah. Yes. Is it okay to have the heater on an on a Wi-Fi strip? Probably not again, right. because Carlos turn the heater on. Yeah. Mark, you got to tell me when to turn it off, right? If you don't tell me to turn it off, then yeah, I'm never going to turn it off. Water forever. Yeah, exactly. So right. that, I, you know, I, I take, I, I, I like to sometimes I, so I, I like to take my time to explain to people because I, I want people to learn too, mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes what they're asking, it, you know, it's it probably let's, let's, let's backtrack and think about this one and let's see different scenarios and once you understand yeah. that you're like okay yeah you're right i will I, I, this is a wi-fi doser is probably something that i don't want yeah all right you know? we're gonna put another question on the screen uh jake wanted to know any thoughts on putting green star polyps in the sump instead of catamorpha i'm going to assume you don't mean green star polyps and you mean um, zinnia because people yeah, in the okay. past have used zinnia as a way to reduce nitrate but I have never heard of Green Star Polyps doing anything that could benefit a system besides spread everywhere and cover everything. Yes, yes. So. All right, back to Hydros. One more thing that came to my mind that we haven't talked about, and mm -hmm. it's a when will it come out is the Kraken. And I'm not also, talking about the liquor. No, 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 yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll drink the Kraken too when the Kraken comes out. No, no, it's also it's also scheduled for the next couple of months. Okay, so, so if you guys don't know what the Kraken is, or Kraken is, it's a device that will that you'll plug all your stuff into to run it so let's just say you had five pumps on your aquarium um and just so you know this was a, a hurdle for me to understand too because i just think very i don't know linearly i don't even know what the terminology is but i have a power head that has a cord that has two prongs on the end or three prongs on the end and then they show me something with a bunch of round circles I'm like how am i plugging in my plugs turns out they're saying with certain pumps, you can remove either one part or a big part, and you're down to like the round socket that kind of looks like a mic jack and or whatever, the 3.5 millimeter thing. And you or you can get a piece from Coral View that's like a, a pigtail. I don't know. And you am I sort of saying this correctly? I'm sure you can say it so, much more eloquently. Yeah, <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. <laughs> so the, the, the Kraken is a power strip. 
Yes. At the, at the very, at the very, very basic, it's a power strip. It's something that you plug things into it. Mm -hmm. But unlike the other power strips out there, the other power strips are what we call an AC power strip okay. is, you know, a, a, something that comes out of the equipment, whatever you have, there's equipment and then then you have a cable and then it has the three prongs in it. Right. That's it. So you plug that in there yep. and it goes from the, from the cable, like a bubble blaster, a bubble blaster, yep. the, the cable comes right out of the pump and it goes cable, cable, cable to the prongs. And then you plug it into the wall. Right. That's what we would consider an AC device. Okay. Now a D a DC device is a, it's a device that here's the, here's the main device. Then cable comes out. It goes into a power supply unit, like a black, yeah. usually yeah. mean well power supply. And then from there, then it goes to the wall with the three pro prongs. Right. Okay. Up until this time, whether it's a bubble blaster or whether it's a light with a power supply, we always connect it to the, to the, to the, to a power strip, yeah. a smart power strip. Right. So the Kraken takes this a, a little bit further and what the Kraken is, is a power strip, but it's a DC power strip. Okay. So what it will do is it can only take the devices that have the power brick in the middle. Okay. Okay. So most of the devices, every, every pump, like the Nero, uh, what is it that Nero, is yeah. it a Nero? A the Nero, Nero okay, so. five, the Nero three, exactly. Nero seven. So, so the Nero, the Nero has a, you know, the pump, it goes to the little controller from the little controller. It goes to a power, a power, a power brick. Yep. And then, and then between the controller and the power brick, there's a little plug. Right? I disconnect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that disconnect and then from the power brick then you get the cable that goes to the power strip okay right. so what you're going to do with the kraken is you get to grab that cable that goes to the power strip you mm -hmm. grab that power supply you mm -hmm. take it out and you put it in a drawer uh -huh. and then from the now you have the cable left going to the little controller that goes to the pump now yep. that cable now we are going to give you and we're going to sell another cable that mm -hmm. will connect to that yeah and the then from that the pigtail and then you connect yeah. it to the kraken so the kraken comes with a huge 480 watt 20 amp power supply okay so all you're doing technically is all you're doing is you're grabbing all those little power supplies from your lights from your pumps you're mm -hmm. taking it up out and you're going to converge them into one single power supply yeah commercial grade mm -hmm. i'm not talking about another a big black power supply that's yeah. a consumer grade power supply no right. we're talking about a commercial grade power supply mm -hmm. and that's going to power the system now because i've never used one i only have seen it on display at two trade shows mm -hmm. how will you know how much power needs to go through the pigtail to the Nero three versus a Radeon light or, or whatever needs a power brick. Do I have to look at my power yeah. supply and say, it says 27 volts. This one says 14 volts. This one says seven yeah, so, and tell it, I want to give seven through wire number one and 14 through wire. No, two. no, that's the, that's an excellent question. And then, and if you look at the, if you, when you look at the Kraken, it'll show you eight ports mm -hmm. and then it'll say four ports parentheses, okay. 24 volts. Oh, okay. Okay, so Excellent. some are a specific number, or all yes, of them. So, are. A, so <laughs> all, all no, no, all of them. It's all eight will only give you twenty four volts. So you oh. cannot. So don't plug in a thirty six volt device. It won't work. Like a Vectra. Don't plug, yeah, because it's, there's not enough juice. It just won't right. run. Okay. But then if you if you run if you plug in a twelve volt device, then you'll burn it out because you're plugging. Right. It's like getting the. It's like it's like grabbing a device grabbing the wrong power supply yeah. and plugging it in. Yeah, right. exactly. So that's what you, so you have to be careful. And that's why we we write in there 24 volts. Now okay. the the Kraken is going to have eight ports that are 24 volts, but yep. then on top there's also four ports that are going to be 12 volts. Okay. So it's either 12 or 24, nothing yes. in between. Got nothing it. in between. Nothing in and between. And then the other part that's so special about this thing, besides it being one super power supply, <laughs> Is that yep. you? It is ready for and can be connected easily to a bank of batteries. So yes. everything's in DC mode, and then you add one or ten motorcycle batteries, or four car batteries, or seven marine batteries, or whatever it is you want. Okay. Yes. But you could have a really long extended life, which we're heading in. I mean, not yet, but there are parts of the U.S. heading into hurricane season, and they might even have to evacuate. And if they had the Kraken with mm -hmm. a bunch of batteries and they had to abandon their house for three days, 
all their in-tank flow could continue to flow for maybe 36 or 48 hours, not a generator that's outside relying on someone to fill up a gas tank and put Correct. in gas every 12 hours. This is gonna last as long as you have enough batteries in series. Yeah, and the thing about it is, I mean, again, hydros, the way we design hydros is like, we, 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 we I'm, I'm tired of, of buying 2.5 amp batteries mm -hmm. for overpriced because they're marine for, for the reef hobby. Yeah. You know, it's like, you should be able, you know, we said at Corby, it's like, you should be able to go to Amazon and buy a boat battery, which is 20 amp hours, mm -hmm. hundred amp hours for like a hundred dollars, how much, however much you want to spend and yeah. plug it into your system. That's what I want to be able to do. Right. So that's what the Kraken does. The Kraken does that. It allows you to plug in a 12 volt yeah. lead acid battery into the oh, system. Oh, that's right. It can't be your Tesla power wall. It's got to be no. a very specific battery. Well, and the reason why we do that is because of the charging. Okay. Yeah. So what happens is, is, is the Kraken can receive the can transfer the voltage and the power from the battery. Yeah. But then when the power comes back on, then we also want the Kraken to recharge that battery. Yeah. So it's, it's ready for the next time. And the yeah. charging is expensive. If yeah. you were to make it, it, depending on how you do charging, it's expensive right. and it's, and it can be dangerous right. too. Cause if you don't charge the battery correctly, you, it'll yeah. explode. So what we decided is the safest one we've done that we thought, you know, again, it's not a right or wrong, but that's what we do. We have the prerogative. We're the manufacturers. We decided to do that. If you want to do yeah. something else, then you build it yourself. Yeah. Um, um, but what decided is that we decided that lead acid was safer than lithium ion. So that's what we're using. So now the batter, the Kraken is going to charge the lead acid battery when it's done. Now okay. we did get a little bit of feedback from the users when we released the product, the Magnang. They're like, "Oh yeah, we need to make sure that the char you know we want to be able to use lithium ion, it's lithium ion, and all this and all that." So yeah. what we've done is inside the Kraken, there's a little pin, mm -hmm. like a computer pin, and you just yeah. plug. You you even move the pin or you move it one way or another, right. and what the pin does is it disables the charging. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So now that you've disabled the chart, now that you've disabled the charging. Then you can use lithium ion or you can use lead oh. acid. But oh, that's now neat. It's up, yes, but now it's okay. yeah, but now it's up to you to go to, now it's up to you to go to Amazon, pay 200, 300, 400 dollars for a battery charger right. and plug and then connect the battery to that. So the Kraken won't charge the battery, but this yeah. charger will right. It's the bet yes. I, I was just gonna say it's not really I mean the word we use charger, which isn't really a great way to describe it. There's trickle charging. And then there's something called a battery tender. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's different things. My big complaint for many years, Ecotech came out with a battery backup system that had a power brick, <laughs> like you're talking about power bricks, and you would plug that in and it was always on. And it would just top off the battery mm -hmm. at all times, but it basically killed the battery because it's just running. And when we had our ice storm a few years ago and it wiped out power for days, none of my battery backups worked. I had four of them in place to protect my reef and none of them worked because the battery's mm -hmm. been cooked by the power brick. And I had someone tell Correct. me at one of our frag swaps, Mark, get rid of those power bricks and get trickle chargers. You get them on Amazon, they're like $18 or whatever. And, but it was like, it was this weird thing with like coiled cables and clips. And I was like, I don't have any way to connect that without taking the case apart. And so I just never got around to it. Right. And there I was in the ice storm up a creek. And then I hooked up my generator. Okay, I'm okay. But then my generator wasn't running right. And then it blew up. And I was really struggling because now what do I do? My reef's going to die. And I was lucky that day someone lent me one that was close enough. I got it going. But mm -hmm. as soon as the weather broke, you know, like two days later, I was at Batteries Plus saying, do you have any batteries left? Because I assumed everyone bought their batteries because power outage. And they said, we got tons. And so I bought four giant batteries. I hooked them up in series. I think that's right. <laughs> I always say it backwards. Uh, I hooked them up in series so I'd have longer lifespan and I got my vortex all connected to it. So if anything else happened, they could take over. And then I was trying to figure out how to connect the Vectra and I discovered I needed to use their booster cable that would then take it, like I said, to 36 volts. 
but I mm -hmm. wasn't sure. And I tried to like strip a wire to like make something. And finally, I got a hold of the president of Ecotech, which is Tim Marks. And I said, Tim, how do I do this? I mean, you always said, matter of fact, so not to be morbid, but when Caitlin died just mere days before, one of the messages from Tim was, if there's anything you need, let me know. So here I was four days later, you know, when you said, if there's anything I need, I need some way yes. to make this work. I need your expertise. Can you please explain what to do? And he said, you still have the cases that the battery backup was in. I was like, yeah. He says, take out the socket and mm -hmm. hook up the wires to your battery array and plug your booster cable into that. And so I did exactly what he said and it still didn't work. And that's when I discovered my booster cable was bad. But he ah. overnighted me a booster cable that arrived the next day, so I had a backup and uh, yes. could keep my, my in-tank flow going. So there's always so many things to keep in mind. But the whole principle behind the Kraken that I like, and a lot of us don't think about, it, like my UPS, it is battery that will turn that power into AC power for my air pump. Mm -hmm. so that the air pump can blow bubbles, okay? It's not DC. Yes. So it's, it's wasteful. If it was going into an air pump that was DC, it'd probably run 10 times longer because it's not converting yes. the power into AC. So the Kraken yes. being a DC device, running DC pumps, loses power and the battery sitting there feeding it 12 or 24 volts of battery power. 12 volts, 12 keep volts, it 12 volts. 12, okay, I was trying to say, I was wondering, how do you do 24? Mm -hmm. I guess that's when you don't do no, 12 series, then you do parallel. I don't know. <laughs> but my point was that no, you no. have this coming in and it keeps everything going for a good duration because you're not converting to AC. That part, I understand. The rest of it, I say Correct. wrong. <laughs> Correct. You're taking, you're taking, you know, um, um, you know, it depends on, a battery is just that, a battery. And what happens is if the manufacturer developed a product, a controller, where the battery, where the controller is not programmed to accept 12 volts, then it's never going to work. Yeah. So at the end of the day, again, at the end of the day, we can only do what the manufacturer allows us to do. Right. If a, if a pump requires 24 volts to run, then if you give it less than 24 volts, then it's not going to run. But mm -hmm. there are manufacturers out there that have already put that into the thing. They say, okay, I'll run at 24, but if you run at 12 volts, you're going to run at half the speed or yeah. you're going to run at this. You're going to run at whatever you at want. At least it runs. So that's where, zero. that's where it comes in. So okay. you still, you got, you have, you, you have to remember though, if the pump is not made to run at 12 volts, then the cracking is not going to make it run at 12 volts. Okay. All right. Kyle asked yes. the question, shouldn't it be able to charge a, life po4 battery <laughs> I don't know what that is with a built-in bms since that would manage the battery end does that mean something to you <laughs> <laughs> you can actually um, uh, you can actually um, um like I said, this must be a lithium ion battery right is charger talking about if you if you if you, if you no i mean I, I'm not an engineer in that. I don't know the knowledge of that one right there. But okay. what I can tell you is if you have your own charger, then all you need to do is you need to disable the charger on the Kraken. Yeah, that's and simple. Once you do that, then you can use pretty much any battery you want. Yeah, okay. That's, that's pretty much that, it. I love so that. As so long that as you switch, have your own charger, because at the end of the day, you just want to make sure that the... Yeah. Is that switch a true switch? Like just a switch? Or is it like a dip switch? It's more like a dip switch. You open it up and you take a dip switch in there. Okay. All right. There's nothing dangerous about it either because the power supply the power supply is not inside the Kraken. The power supply is outside and it's fully sealed. So okay. as long as you unplug the power supply from the Kraken, all you have is a it's a box without it. You can open it up, take the dip switch out, plug it yep. back in, then plug the power supply back in there, and you get yourself nice something without the ability to charge. When you take the ability to charge, then you yeah. can actually use anything you want. Right. Okay. Yes. And then OU812 says that uh, he has two ice cap battery backups that are on his hydro system. It gives him a, some peace of mind. So apparently those are working with the hydros to some fashion with certain pieces of gear. Carlos, we're going to have to wrap this up because someone in your house is sucking down the Wi-Fi to watch all the movies or something. It's just getting really, really bad quality. So I think your household is stealing all the I know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. 
Maybe your Hydro says downloading firmware. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's the case, but I'm the only, I'm the only one at home. So I'm not, I'm the only one at home. So I'm not oh, sure strange. what's going on. Um, yeah. either that, or, you know, I'm, I'm not as fancy as you. I'm not as, I'm, I'm not as fancy as you are. I don't have fiber in here in Chicago, Chicago. Hard we don't have wire. fiber. No, no. You want to wire to don't the trunk. Listen, thank you so much yeah. for coming on today and talking with us about some of this stuff and giving me ideas. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to what else comes out. I'm looking forward to the app at some time in the future being fantastic. I think that's gonna happen. And uh, I'm going to, I wanna switch over to the end of this. So I'm just gonna cut out because your Wi-Fi is gonna throw us away in a second here. But thank you very, very much for coming on and hanging out with us. And if, he, if any of you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and Carlos will come to this video and he will answer you directly because that's the kind of person he is. He's super helpful and super handy and very available. I mean, he answered a lot of my questions. When he was helping me with my hydros, he was on the phone with me for a couple of hours. I said, you do this with every customer? And he's like, no. So <laughs> 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 he's like, not at all. Yep. So let me uh, just say adieu. I'm going to go ahead and go to our end screen. Carlos, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. And I will Thank see you, so you when much, I guys. see you, buddy. Okay? Thank you. See you all later, right. guys. Thanks for Bye. having me. Bye. All right, so uh, we are on the wrong slide. I want this slide right here. Sorry, guys. We are at the end of our video, which means that we definitely want to talk about water testing because we always wrap up our live streams with this discussion. It's very important that we test our water to make sure that our livestock is healthy and happy. We want to verify that all the parameters are where they belong. And, you know, when you look in your tank and everything's fine, you're thinking, well, then the water's fine which it kind of is, but things could be starting to go off kilter. And we, if you test your water, you'll know. If you just look at the tank, you don't really know, you just assume. We don't wanna assume that the water's all right. We wanna make sure that all the, the ranges of our numbers are within tolerances so that everything does well and continues to grow. And even in my beautiful reef that's been super stable for weeks, I have a couple of SPS colonies that are not playing nicely and are turning white. I don't know why. Well, it's water test Saturday, so I'm going to go ahead and look and see what the numbers are. And hopefully, they, you know, what, if there is something wrong, I can make a correction. But as far as I know right now, there's no deficits. So it could just be that I had some bad luck with a couple, but all the rest of the reef is doing great. And I try to always remember that even if there are a couple of flaws in my tank, there's so much good. I don't want to get totally uh, obsessed with and frustrated with the one or two things that are doing poorly because I want to continue to appreciate all the good things that are happening at the same time. Uh, I run this channel like I do my business. It's me. And so anything you purchase from MilosReef.com helps keep me in business. It allows me to continue to sell uh, products to people everywhere. I can actually have inventory <laughs> in stock to go out. And I do a lot of custom acrylic work too. So if there's something you need, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at sales at MilosReef.com. If um, there's something that you need and you can't find it, try looking in the search box. Just had the website updated uh, two days ago, and they made it even better. So now as you're looking for products, you should be able to type them in and hopefully find it if I sell it. And there are more products I'll be adding shortly that are still in my possession, but not on the website yet. So there's a chance that there may be something you're looking for, and I have it but you didn't know you could buy it from me. So feel free to always send me a message if you're looking for something, and if I have it, I'll let you know. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you again next Saturday. Bye.